feel good at all. But um, today is going to be a tall task. There's no question going up against Trider. But after last night, having to be in the clubhouse, wait around, not get a chance to play the game, there was a lot of card playing. There was a lot of, I'm ready, well, go sit down. Oh, I'm ready, go sit down. That can be challenging, but the boys got a double dip today. Plus, uh, you know, you got to be careful when you get in the in a big league clubhouse because there's there's a lot to eat. That is a lot to eat. You got to you got to stay out of the ice cream. <laughs> I remember yeah. my rookie year, we played a double header peaches, and uh, it was Wrigley Field. Never been there before, and it was there was all you could eat ice cream. Uh oh. So in between games, you killed it. A lot of lot of ice cream. Not feeling too good in game two. So lesson learned. Uh, it's stuff you have to go through folks you have to go through that so you can learn it and then and then you file it and then you teach it to the young guy well for me it's all about keeping that enthusiasm that jubilation that they got from the walk-off victory on Monday night you know it's too bad they couldn't play last night because it was they were ready but you start seeing upper 90s fastballs triple digits out of Spencer Strider you'll wake up in a hurry and trust me the Tigers will be ready to play we're so glad you're with us players only Simo Jonesy first pitch coming up and peaches, peaches. let's go boys what a bank can be come to Comerica by wall side windows buy more save more half off every window plus up to 15 percent off by Viger Law, one goal, one mindset, justice for you. And by GMC, visit your closest GMC dealer for exceptional offers all month long. We cling to the Monday memory. This finish against the Braves, they were down 5-2 in that game, and they roared back to tie in the ninth inning. A look at the Tiger swings in that inning and where those balls landed through StatCast, and it's sponsored by Google Cloud. We'll hope for more of that. Balls finding green here at Comerica Park in game one on a Wednesday afternoon downtown. Expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. By your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Rally House Detroit, your city, your house, Rally House. Tigers and Braves will play two, the first of them coming up in moments here on Valley Sports. Now the Miller Light Report in light of the weather last night is a check of the weather today. We're dry. And right now the temperature is 64. We could get as warm as 75 degrees without any rain in the forecast. And that is music to our ears as we begin our players only telecast. Who knows what will happen today? See you <laughs> One pitch rocket to Maton. And we're off, boys. Let's go. Here we go. There we go. One out. One pitch, one out. Well, here's the Bravos batting order presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. It's Acuna Jr. at the top. He just grounded out. We got Matt Olson hitting second. In the middle of their lineup, Travis Darno hitting fourth. And then to round out the Bravos lineup will be Michael Harris, the second. It's a very potent lineup. This is Mr. Olson. We want him with nobody on. Well, he's got three plus pitches. He's got some electric stuff. He's got a Olsen. nasty slider. Yes, Reese Olson. Oh, we had two Olsons there. Yeah. So Olson's facing Olson. Yeah. I was talking about hitter Olson. Well, the, Olsen the Olsen twins. twins? Yeah, but really I'm thinking good. about Reese Olson and how well yes. he's done in his first couple of outings here at the major league levels. Just flat out overpowering at times with a fastball in the mid to upper 90s. He's got a wicked slider. That, that was one. it right there. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's that that's that one and that's and that's a perfect time to throw that in a 1-1 count in an action count because you want to try to try to get it just close enough that he can make us a, a swing. Got a man there. Yeah. There's been a man there for 150 years. Yep. The Tigers starting defense is brought to you by Mary Grove awnings and uh, outfield looks like this. Kerry Carpenter's been doing it with the bat. Jake Marisnik out in center. And then not a whole lot of changes in the infield with Javier Baez, Spencer Torkelson, Eric Haas doing the catching today in replace of Jake Rogers, who caught a brilliant game in uh, on Monday's game. That's that 95 pound bowling ball right there. That's a good pitch. Good pitch. You've got you guys got a chance to watch this kid a couple of times, right? What are you what are you seeing from a pitching standpoint? What do you like about him? I I like a lot a lot of aggressiveness. Uh, I like uh, uh, he's got a live he's got a nice live whip to his arm, 
and uh, and I like that he's got confidence in three pitches for sure and uh, sprinkle in the curveball when he needs it. That's off the end of the bat, boys. We're going to commercial. Let's go. Woo, let's get some runs. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Yep. Three up, three down. Three up, three down. Three up. Eight more times. See you on the other side. Here's the Tigers batting order presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. You've got Zach McKinstry at the top, who's been he's been the straw that stirs the drink at the top. Spencer Torkelson, we saw the big home run, two-run bomb to left center field. He'll hit second. Kerry Carpenter is back. He'll hit third. Bias in the four hole and to round out this Tigers lineup will be Jake Marisnik in the nine hole. Okay, fellas. See how aggressive McKinstry is off a of strider. I'm gonna take it. Not, not like Acuna swinging at that first pitch. Well, I was watching Strider get ready between the innings, right? Getting ready for this first at bat here. And I was just intrigued by the fact that Jonesy, he didn't have a long arm swing back. We used to say that he was he could pitch in a phone booth. And that's exactly because what it looks he like. Was his, his, his arm stroke, like you're talking about, goes right down his leg, comes up next to his ear, and it's hidden. And then he's got 100, and he throws a changeup that looks exactly like his fastball. Take a look at this. Yeah. yeah. As a hitter here, this doesn't allow me to have much time to, to load up, to get myself in a good hitting position. You're going to see maybe see a guy's a little late today on that fastball and maybe a little early on the changeup. You're going to have to pick a pitch. Yeah, I think I'm going to look for a fastball I'm for gonna, sure. I mean, you have to, you have to sit fastball. And try to. That's a good swing. But, I mean, this is a good demonstration for all the fans out there to watch to watch these hitters when a, when a, when a pitcher really has got plus stuff and, uh, and it looks like he's able to, able to locate. You've got to you got to eliminate yeah. stuff. You've got to like eliminate parts of the plate, or you've got to eliminate pitches. Correct? Yes, absolutely. Look at that K rate there. I'm going to sit dead red. I'm not going to set my sights as a right hand hitter to right center. I'm going to maybe think a little bit more left center. And here's why: if I can catch that ball out in front, he's going to supply the power because he throws so hard. All I got to do is touch him out in front. So when a pitcher sees that and uh, knows that you're selling out that much on a fastball. If you swing and miss, that's going to kind of tip the hand on the guy, and he may be able to pick that up and throw some breaking balls for a strike, and that's a homer, boys. Well, you can the put left it on fielder the sneak that ball Yes! The left fielder didn't even move. If we get video of that guy, that was a good one. See, you didn't like that when that happened. You no, want, you want me to move, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's okay. It's we, you hit it that far? Yeah, you hit it that far, maybe. <laughs> you think he's starting to feel a little comfortable? You know, yeah, that's that the same swing as uh, Monday. He ain't missing many fastballs. Oh, baby, take a look at this 99-mile-per-hour fastball right down the middle. Doesn't get to the catcher's glove. Booyah! That ball's way out to left center field. Do it, Torque. That's really that's – really, so, like, as a pitcher, I'm enamored by guys that can even get to 99. But then get extension and drive it and all that thing. That's as as easy and as effortless as Spencer Strider was winding up and throwing. Was as easy and as effortless as that swing from Torque. That's really really great, Josie. When you hit them that far, you don't feel them off the bat. I was about to say you don't. It's just it's just like magic. Baby. It's like when you're on the golf course and you hit a good one and it just goes. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that either. No. You know, you know, Simo, I, I was thinking about Spencer Strider, and I was thinking, well, if I if I were a hitter, I mean, he leads the major leagues with 121 strikeouts. So you know that he's going to get a lot of strikeouts. That's in the back of your mind. I think if I were going up there, I'd say, I'm not going to sit around and take a whole lot of pitches because I'm going to get in a hole here, and he's got nasty stuff. So I get three swings. I'm going to go up and try to use them, you know, instead of maybe looking for that pitch in a certain spot. Swing early and often. That's what you're saying, because, again, you yeah. don't want to fall behind in the count. He's got too many weapons right. to put you away with. So, no, there's no question I'm looking for some fastball early. And even if he hangs me a little slider, I, I, my eyes will adjust, and I'll be able to put a good swing on it. Get legs. Ah. You're right, though. That one right there looked like 
Kerry Carpenter's kind of stuck the bat out there, and Strider, I'm, you know, supplied all the power. That's all you have to yeah. do is just want to get to that good hitting position. You got to be short to that ball though. When you're when a guy throws this hard, yes, you've got to be short to it, and you don't you can't take a big swing. You can't try to do too much. That's a nice swing there by by uh, Kerry Carpenter. That's one to build off of. Yeah, because and even the pitch before when he fouled off the breaking ball to to remain in the count to get that fastball up and yeah. hit it was a good a good piece of hitting. Jonesy, you started the straw, straw, Starburst rally early. Torkelson greeted Strider, didn't he? Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, That's oh, us, boys. That, That's us, boys. Look out, Simo. I will. I guys, that, that <laughs> I was flinching when we were in Philly. Ball came up, and I was I was I was flinching. And my wife got on me, man. She was like, "Hey, what are you doing? You can't be flinching. You got to make that play." <laughs> I told her it'll never happen again. So, every ball that's coming up here now, hands on deck. Ready, Ready to, to go. go. You know, now that I now that I think about it, because when when I was playing, there were no, there were no. Uh, what are those things called? I just went blank. The, uh, the screen screens down the side, and uh, we went a hundred years without them, and I don't know how we survived. You don't know how. Take the early one nothing lead on that man's home run, uh, second of the series. And good news is the Braves have not won a road game when the opponent scores first. So good sign for the Tigers so far in the early going here. There's a good chance the Tigers win the series against them. They've got two good big games today. Wolf's all over that one. One down, one pitch, one out. How about the aggressiveness of the Braves? And well, Reese Olson doesn't he you know he's got a lead. I don't I don't think he's pitched with a lead since uh, since he's been up here. So he I've hasn't even little, changed. I've got a little bit of info on why the why the Braves might be swinging early. Uh, their their slugging percentage first pitch for the for the Braves uh, like uh, let's see who's hitting now. Darno. No, this Rosario. is Rosario. Oh, sorry, Rosario. He's a. He's at he's at the league average 494 on the first pitch, and and like the first the first six guys 802, 581, 650, 777, 536. That's your average. That's why well, they're, they're they're slugging. That's oh. why they're that's why they're that's why they're, that's why they're aggressive first pitch as a staff as a team. These guys are these guys are hunting it early. Well, they do damage, and a lot of times, you know, pitchers are trying to get that throw that first pitch strike. You guys know that, especially a young guy, right? Yes. You want to. They're I'm trying to ambush you early. Fett, Fett is teach is, is talking to Reese about, hey, bro, let's go. You know, the, there's a lot going on. Your first home start. Let's be aggressive. Let's be down in the zone. Pick a side of the plate. Or or if you get 1-0, just right down the middle and see what happens. What you don't want to do as a pitcher, and I'm speaking from a hitter standpoint, don't groove me that first pitch fastball. That one you may not get back. Right to you the, to the guys to, to the guys that do that. There yeah, are you got to be able to throw some all speed pitches though. You got to get me off of them. Yep. What you got, Dan? Now it's time for Chevrolet's strongest player, and we want to take you back to the Bronx Ooh, in 2000. And so look at that. Ooh, look at, wait a minute. What's oh. Jonesy? Jonesy, you're not even that. Ball, that ball almost hit you. I'm so focused. Jones oh, there's is, a net. In Jones okay. is just getting ready to oh, get the okay. save in the Big Apple, baby. I'll, That's all I'll, that was. I was trying to play it off like I was a tough guy. Like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't, even, it doesn't even bother me. But there was a net there, and they caught it. Uh, backdoor breaking ball to a lefty. See that? <laughs> yeah. That's really, really, really good, really good pitching. That's that that that's that feel that these that these young pitchers are able to develop down in the minor leagues, and and then when they get up here, that's a tool that they can use to survive. But see, that's the thing. You know all those slugging percentages that the Braves have. So so do the Tigers. That's right. So they're saying the same thing. You know, hey, they're hunting first pitch. That's I don't right. care what it is. You got to make sure it's a good quality pitch. Don't go in there just saying, okay, I'm going to get ahead and throw them a cookie. Yes. I think as an overall scouting report, maybe today uh, would be would be you want to be. You want to be able to change speeds in the zone because these guys, although they're very aggressive, Simo, mm -hmm. they 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 do a really good job of staying in the zone. It's not falling in that that pattern either. You know, like throw a fastball to one guy first pitch, 
you know, second guy, you're throwing a fastball, so you want to change it up. And That's just right. Say, first one's fastball. Second guy comes up, you you, you throw a uh, slider for a strike or yeah. change up something like that, you know, so they can never know exactly what's coming that first pitch. What's really interesting about the information these days in the big leagues is where where pitchers will get in these routines that, that Peaches is talking about, where what what pitch do does pitcher A uh, need use when he needs to make a pitch? Uh -huh. right, you know, like right. like in a two one count. What's he going like, to? Yeah. Like in a one zero -oh count. You know, when or a two two count when when there's when all right I I know that they know what's coming, but this pitch right here for Reese is going to be a slider, and it and it's good enough that that he can throw it. They know it's coming, and he maybe still can't hit it. Look at this at bat though. He's throwing change up, a couple of good sliders, and Albies has been able to hang in there. Let's just don't give in. This is that tough at bat. Say, don't give in. I'm just going to give him a cookie. Keep making that pitch. Yep. That's a good piece right there. That's a great at bat. There. It was. Yeah, yeah but it, here's why I believe it's a great at bat. That sets Albies up for the next two at bats against Reese Olsen. He saw everything, he saw every pitch in his arsenal. That at bat. And this pitch right here that he, he didn't gets see the his hit curve. on, he didn't see the curveball, but he rarely throws that pitch. Is a good. That's a good. Is a good pitch. It's a good change up, fading down in a way, catches a little bit too much of the plate. You yeah. can see that. Yeah. But lefties like that ball down and in anyway. That's the pitch that they get to, I believe, easily. First pitch swinging again. Here we go. Perfect. Well, Tigers are winning one nothing. MLB All-Star Ballot. Vote daily at Tigers.com slash vote to send your favorite players to the Emerald City. Our favorite players, our favorite former players are calling the game for us in our players only telecast, guys. John, we're just hanging out enjoying this nice weather today after going through that cruddy, cruddy weather last night. Yep. It's a beautiful day for baseball. A lot of ping, a lot of ping pong in the clubhouse. It yesterday. was a lot of ping pong playing. Oh, That's, are you any good at ping pong? I'm not very good at ping pong. I'd like to believe that I'm one of the best. So, any challenges for the boys wow. inside the clubhouse? Let's do it. Wow, I'm ready. It's that slider. Maton's going to surprise him and maybe think about button for a base hit, and that just clips him right in the foot. That's the uh, second time that's happened in uh, about a week. That happened in Philadelphia on a breaking pitch that caught him on uh, caught him in the foot. It's my guy Abanez. That's all right baby. That's all right. Look at the distance though like you were talking about yeah. Simo. I mean that that ball just jumped off his bat breaking ball up there and that's another one that hit through the warning patch warning track just like Kerry Carpenter. Let's see how Miggy handles this this fastball. You know, there's been a lot of talk. Mickey can't get to the fastball. Well, I've been watching him over this season. He's been getting to that 95 plus fastball, hitting it hard. First pitch breaking ball, bet you. First pitch fastball. And oofta. I just called Look it. Look at this. I tried to Look tell at you. This. I tell you. Let's go to 508. How about that? Come on, man. Timing. How about, how about we go in. ahead and go to 508? I just tried to tell you. You can't sneak that cheese by that rat. He's a Hall of Famer for crying out loud. He absolutely crushed that ball. He should have thrown that curveball. Because, <laughs> because Miggy, he, he's right. He's right. Way to go, pal. Way to go. Oh, look Hit at that Miggy. slap shot. Let's see oh, the man. slap oh, shot. Here we go. <laughs> I love the that strut. I love the uh -huh, strut. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, there it there is. is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, oh with the sword. Putting it away. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. oh, I love it. I hope he hits another one now. I <laughs> see it again. <laughs> oh. That is beautiful, though. That was a beautiful swing. He's one of the smartest hitters in the game. He knew he was getting that fastball. He knew he was getting that fastball. And you know, for the guys that had the luxury to play with him at different levels, different places of his timeline of his career, we've all played with special players. But 
there's a lot of times that you know regular big league players did hot that, that, that might be trouble good. that's trouble here we go here he is. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, the boys got the big bats out today and they are flexing oh man let's go So they're on the fastball. Every oh, one of them. They are Every on the one fastball, of them. and the hands go up, and they stay there. Everybody's on their feet tonight or today. Hockey goalie, go top shelf, Hasi. Here we go. Right there. Oh. Cause it's like it's been a while since I've had that feeling. Yeah, that's a good and stuff. And it feels so good. That's good stuff. I mean, just take a look at this at battery. He takes 86 up. He's like, no, don't want that one. I'm looking for that dead red. And then you try to sneak this cheese, Bobby. It's right down the middle. It's 96. And he belts that ball. Part of the biggest parts of the ballpark. Got strike. He so, throws a lot of a lot of strikes. You know, it's gonna be interesting, day. It's gonna be interesting it. here, boys. <laughs> hey, what oh, happens? Oh, what happens when you played first pitch right here? When you play back-to-back -back homers, drill? No, what? not that. But that's where the game's different for me. Tell There's, me about it. Tell, tell the fans, but tell me about it. You wanna you wanna you wanna let them know that you're out there. You would you would maybe try to. You know, not be a tough guy and, and intentionally throw at a guy, but you could throw inside. You could you could move their you move, move his their feet. feet. You could throw a few breaking balls. You know, just to, just to let them know that you're out there. But the game just just is uh, is a tad different in that in that regard because these guys know all the information and they just go into the next hitter instead of maybe maybe carrying something to set a to set a tone over the long course of the game. But Mr. Strider's got to get out of the middle of the plate. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's a hanging breaking ball. Yeah. And you were talking about it, Dan. You were you were commenting on his on his ERA coming yeah. into this game, and all we all I was focused on was his stuff, and and his stuff is is great. But it's but you know, in the big leagues, you know, you have to stay out of the middle of the plate. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what team it doesn't matter what time doesn't matter how much rain delays or whatever you got to get out of the middle of the zone you know it just reminded me Jonesy when pitching coach went out there to, to talk to Strider and did anybody ever come out to you and say uh, how'd you hold that one Jonesy <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. and you'd say well you know I, I held it this one well don't do it anymore that's you know? right try that's a right. different Sitting try ball. a different one <laughs> Oh, look at it. Look at Zach McKinstry. Ah, uh, that's okay. That was aggressive right there. Tried to catch him sleeping and overthrew the cutoff, man. And the first baseman caught it and threw it back to second base for the second out. Yeah, Olsen did a great job yep. backing up there. Oh, they're going to check it. Wow. Here we go. Early in the game. They must be pretty sure about this. Well, it's a nice swim move here. Let's pull the left hand back. Oh, oh, it might be safe. Yeah, that's a good slide there by McKinstry. Fellas, this is a yeah, this is not, is out at second base. Detroit is challenged. This is oh, unless he slid off. I don't think he kept oh, the tag no. on him. You saw the swim move. This Pulled is like May, this is like Maton in the eighth running that running that ground ball. Through. This is those little bitty things that these guys are really really good at. Being aggressive, getting into scoring position. If this is a safe call, looky here. What do you got? I got him safe. What do you got, safe? Let's see where that tag. You can't see if he held the tag on him. I, I thought he took the tag off. Swim of move. Got him. Safe, 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 safe. His toe still on. Toe still out. on. Oh, he's out. Right there. Out. That's where he's going to be Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Safe if they keep the continuation. But you got to see if... if if see, that tag was on his leg. When they tag him on the here. when they when they tag him on let's the see, leg. Let's see. Let's see what review. The call on the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Detroit will lose their challenge. 
Well, you don't mind it. You love the aggressiveness. I do. No, McKinstry just trying to be aggressive, getting himself to second base, just trying to put himself in scoring position. But I'm sorry, that is not what instant replay's for. Right there. No. It's for the initial swim move, right? Right. It's for the initial tag, right? Not that it's once you touch the base at second base, you're it's dead. But but you know, to continue to hold attack, I guess. But that's a pitcher talking, I guess. What do I know? <laughs> I, I mean, that's 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 an important play, though. Instead of second and third, one out. Now you got two outs and just a runner on third. So I mean, that's a you know, that's a, that's a big play, big call. I I I still like the aggressiveness, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm. Johnny, where are you on the replay? Because clearly you don't like the replay. Is that what you're telling me? No, nah, I'm cool with it. I'm. You know, I'm. Just oh, don't backpedal I'm, down. I'm just complaining. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not complaining about the replay, because the swim move, like at the start of the replay, I'm cool with it. But if you're gonna hang it on and and you know, you know tag him on a shoelace, um, <laughs> he kept the tag on him. I know. It's I know. a continuation. Yeah. Yeah, and if I'm pitching, he's out. So I get it. You feel good about that? Yeah, then. yeah, I get it. I don't mind the replay. I want him to get it right. No, right, and that's what we all want. That we don't ever want to see another Galarraga perfect game. Oh, we do not want to no, see that. No. That's what it's there for. Right, absolutely. Right. How about how about this second at bat from Torkelson? You know, he hits a bomb on a fastball, and now he's starting to get some changeups. He's saying, "Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna." I'm not going to just uh, give you and groove that one to you anymore. Like that's Albies, right. you were talking about, you know, setting them up. I think that's the same thing, Torque. Yeah, he's getting different pitches. Torque didn't like that call. Well, here's well, what boys, I know. The boys were flexing. Going to love this. Right there. There's Miguel yeah, Cabrera. Miggy. Look at Miggy. He knows it. Love it. And, then and anything that you can do, I can do, I can do better. And it makes you stand up. Yes. What turned out to be a really nice day, and every Sunday is Chevy Sunday Kids Day. Join us Sunday, June 25th. The Tigers face the Twins at 1.40 p.m. Kids 14 and under enjoy free rides on the high chew carousel and Ferris wheel, plus post-game kids run the bases. For tickets, go to tigers.com slash tickets. Good slider right there. Let's see, he missed with the first pitch fastball and then says, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna come in with another fastball. This Those is the, two good sliders. I mean that's a that's a young kid out there and, and and really doing a good job of pitch selection. This is a part of the game where Reese can now take a deep breath. He's into the game, he's he's into the flow and really, really slow things down. And start trying to focus on making pitches. Not that he was not doing it before, but the fact that they hadn't seen him, and he's he's exhilarated and jumping. The ball's jumping, and and now he can he can calm everything down, and start to uh, start to really work on this outing. Let's see what he throws three two here. That's a that's a four nothing fastball right there. But it, look where it was located though. That yes. wasn't just right down the middle. No, that's that a great was, sinker at three and two. Exactly. And so what you're saying, basically, if he's a, if it was the game was different, one nothing, or oh oh, you would have maybe threw a slider. If you get later in the game, later in the ball game, we'll be able to talk, talk about that as the game gets later into the game because that's that's where the cat and mouse really happens. But right now, Reese can Reese can take a lot of onus off of the bullpen by establishing in to the hitters because then then the relievers coming in after him. Uh, don't have to work as hard to establish both sides of the plate. They can they can go to one side or the other and uh, and stick there because the guys in front of them have shown command of both sides of the plate, which keeps the hitters more honest. What are you thinking, Dan? Three, two. No, look at look at Hossie shaking his head, trying to get him fastball again. Yep. You know he was out there having Reese Olson shake his head like I'm shaking off the fastball. I want to go to my secondary pitch. Just a decoy, and then went right back to the fastball again. Three in a row, three-two. That's one thing. So little gamesmanship is what you're telling me. Yeah, that's one thing that's invaluable for for a, for a young pitcher to have a veteran catcher. Look at Mayton. Look at the look at that. He did, folks. He did everything not correct, <laughs> but he got him out. <laughs> that's because he's because, an athlete. Yeah, because 
because he's got to read that ball. There's no question you got to yep. read the high hop. You got to come get he's, it. He's laughing like I, he like, knows I, like my hands are that good, guys. <laughs> they really are. Watch this. You can see this thing. He backs up, throws off his back foot, gets enough on the ball. It's a long throw, and he got him like it's nothing. Nothing to it. Do it every day in the big leagues. That's the way it is. But not giving in, going right after a hitter, veteran hitter, with four straight fastballs gets that first out of the inning, the all-important first out of the inning. It's huge. With the first pitch heater to Mr. Harris right here, the second. He's been hot. He has. But see, that's both sides of the plate. First pitch away, first pitch in. This young man has got some nice command, and you can see like his his tempo has slowed down, his body language is under control, and he's able to get the ball down, which means he's not trying to create velocity, he's not overthrowing. He's he's got great. Great stuff. We we all agree on that. But there's something a little different about his demeanor. And, and if you talk to him briefly, he's so under control and able to slow the game down. Wow, look at that. It's good hitting. It is. That was a backdoor curveball yeah. that he hooked. Right, Simo? Backdoor curveball you hook. You're not supposed to hook it. You're supposed to try to go with it. He hooks it and hooks it past second base. Well, that's just timing. He was a little bit early okay. looking for that fastball. So he kind of got out there a little bit, and then you just this right here. finish your swing off. Yeah. yeah. Not even a strike. That's just hitting with that's, – that's just your timing. Now Catch he, it out in front. Is he looking, looking for that, though? Those first fastballs, he didn't want anything to do with it, you know? And then and then all of a sudden with maybe two strikes, he's looking for that, that slider? I bet he was looking for, for something soft. Yeah. I'm not going to say slide. He might have been looking for that change yeah. of fading down just in the way. protecting. Protecting. Yeah. And he got there early, recognized it was going away, and then just using some athleticism and just getting the barrel to it. Yeah. You don't always get to take your A swing. You know, you sometimes you get to, you got to be athletic, you got to hit athletic and just go down and get the ball. Just find a way to put the barrel on it. So you're saying early in a hitter's preparation, like if he gets his foot down and he gets his he gets his hands out, he can then adjust and then still get the barrel to steer it the ball. Yeah, absolutely. So he did a lot right in order to take that swing to get that hit. Yep. Gotcha. His rhythm, his timing was good. He got there a little bit early. And, and the he, pitchers are saying, man, how'd you hit that pitch? Good rhythm, good timing. Yeah. And was able to adjust. Yeah, and, and pitchers will plant that back in their head just like a hitter will. Uh -huh. They'll say, wait a minute, I remember that. I remember I had yeah. you one, two. I'm coming in. And, uh, exactly. And, right. and you just took the, a good slider out over the plate that probably wasn't a strike and lined it in the center field. Okay, I'm going I'm to learn something from that. Well, one. most hitters like to get extended anyway. We don't like to be crowded with that fastball or anything inside. So you like to get extended. And not only Reese saw, Reese saw that, Mr. Haas saw that too. And you see what he's doing you to bet. Acuna. You bet, Eric. He's standing. I saw that. You're look right. at today. Look at the Braves, though, today. 13 foul balls already in this game. This is only in the top of the third inning. Which mean, yeah, that's that speaks to their to their their approach, man. They they don't swing at balls and they and they hit, they make contact. I wish it ran out of room there. You know it was only a matter of time, though, for Acuna you got loose here at Comerica Park. Yeah. That's his 14th of the season. Yeah, that's a special, special guy. Yeah, it is. Little stutter step there. Hey. Yep. Yeah, it's that slider. And that one caught a little bit too much of the plate. If look I'm how he stayed that, that through feels this like, That feels like a fly ball. And he's it's, yeah, look strong at that. enough to hit it out. Yeah, but. Jones, you, did you see the finish, the follow through there, the high finish that Down that through. creates that backspin, and you get through that ball, and that ball just keeps carrying, man. Well, Back door breaking ball. You know what? Pitch. I think Acuna said too. You know, after Miggy's home run, you you hit one. You know, <laughs> I, they're, I'll they're, hit one. They're country right. <laughs> countrymen. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're That's not getting point. the best of me. That's you know, a great I'm point. going after it. Well, this was far from over, but man, Tigers off to a great start. Cunha Jr. just answered back here in the top of the third. But again, what's interesting and what's exciting for the Tiger fans is that 
is that Reese doesn't appear to nothing changes. I mean, you just keep going, right? I mean, these are the these are the three innings coming up where, you know, you can determine your outing. Three to four innings. That's a, well, good, that's pitch. a good pitch. First pitch breaking ball. Fastball up and in. Backdoor breaking ball to Freezy. Yeah, I think this is that change up and it drops. Okay. Straight yeah, down. Yeah, change up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And. Uh, I was just thinking he had not thrown a whole lot of changeups. He were mainly fastball slider. That was a good time to break that out to a left-handed hitter and perfectly locate. Yeah, that was painted on the outside part of the plate. Be careful the first pitch here. Ooh. He's got a lot of confidence in that slider. And, and, and Olsen will throw that changeup to right-handed hitters too. You know, but yeah, you, you're right, Simo. I mean, in his first two outings, he's gotten a lot more confident in that slider. We heard that that changeup was his go-to pitch uh -huh. to both left-handers and right-handers, but we've seen him really starting to lean heavily on that slider. As soon as as soon as Reese learns to trust and believe in that changeup to the righty, that opens up a whole other dimension. Sure but then, does. but then yeah. you're running into a problem of. Well, my gosh, I've got three really good pitches. Which uh, one do I throw? You know, why would I throw my changeup righty righty unless it's just a specific part of the game or it's a specific hitter, a Cunha or something like that? You might want to not necessarily give in, but you're going to make you're going to try to make your best pitch with something that might not be as predictable. You can see there that we just had on your screen there. You didn't really throw that curveball that often. No, and, and and that's the one that that I like when he when he throws it to steal strike one. Jonesy, I, I remember you doing that too. You had that I called it a little lollipop curveball that you stole strike one with. Give me over, Brady. Very man. very slow, and it come out of your hand and and look like it's headed over the hitter's head. They just give up on it and it drops right in there. Yeah. Reese Olson's got that same one. Yeah, he does, and he's thrown it. He's more tendency to throw that to a little bit to the lefties. I feel like. Carpenter does yeah, see lost, that ball. lost. Look at how far out Javi Baez. That ball stayed yeah, up in the air a long time. Player. All right, boys. Going right. down to the gift we'll, shop. We'll, and then miss, we gotta you. Go we'll hang miss you. Out with the we'll fans. miss you. We'll see you soon. See you later. Be brilliant. <laughs>and electrical look at this Miggy that's his respect Miggy giving the nod to Strider Strider tipping his hat and then the first pitch fastball I'm gonna sneak it by the old guy oh boy no Miggy had something waiting for him this is what I, I love, love the Conor McGregor. look at this He's just strutting. look at the red wing helmet he's been waiting all season long to join the fun and look at him do that man that was I mean just his ability to get to that ball there talking about 40 years old Still ball jumping off that bat. You know, Simo, I, I had one of those rare occurrences where the other day I walked in with Miggy from from the parking lot, you know, to the to the clubhouse. And I said, man, you're swinging it good. And he says, yeah, my timing. I finally got my timing down. That was what was bothering me all this time. Now I'm all synced up and. It sure looks like it over the past two weeks. You know, the road trip, you were with him. And, I mean, he is synced up, and he's been swinging it really well. No, he really has. Again, he's been also hitting off that fastball machine down in the batting cage. Just timing velo and starting to pay off for him. It's nice to see. I was be interesting to see what kind of adjustment Strider makes here. Yeah. If he's going to continue to pump them with the fastball, or is he going to start to go to his all speed pitches? Well, I mean, he started, he throws a lot of strikes, and he's just kind of saying, you know, I got good stuff. Here it is. Try to hit it. And the Tigers are doing that, so all of a sudden you got to change up and say, wait a minute. You know, I, I do have good stuff, but uh, these hitters are pretty good here, too. I better start locating and, and, and throwing some of my secondary pitches a little more often. Well, I do believe this, though. The mistake the hitters will make, well, they'll get off the fastball because they'll start trying to cover his secondary pitches. I think that's the recipe for disaster, to be quite honest with you. Oh, it just stayed in. Yeah, that's a nice Man. play there. Up against the net. Yeah, had a long way to go. I mean, Riley was over there in a shift over at shortstop, and he had to take all the way over and think about the railing, think about the netting, and was able to just make that grab. Didn't take his eyes off the ball. It's a good play. 
Who'd you play with, partner? That was like probably the best third baseman you played with. Wow. Um, you know what? I I, I guess um, I'm going to be partial to all my my Tiger teammates. Um, you know, whoever was over at third, but. I, you know, I had a chance my brief uh, my brief time in Atlanta to play with uh, Terry Pendleton. Oh yeah, and, and uh, over third, and he was pretty good. You know who I played with that I thought was <laughs> pound for pound probably the, one of the best athletes I've ever played with, Brandon Inge. He could pick it over there at third base. Oh, he, he had a, a cannon for him. He wasn't a very good athlete, right? Oh. <laughs> I mean, he, he was one he of the best any, athletes. He, that's what I mean. He can do anything. Yeah, you know, it's a golf ball, ball about 350. <laughs> I remember being at um, Ford Field and watching him kick a 60-something, 60 62-yard field goal through the upright. I was amazed with that. Special kind of talent. Aton right on that one. Getting it right at Albies over there. Tigers still having good swings. It's Miguel Cabrera going big fly, representing Venezuela. But how about on the other side, Acuna Jr. says anything that you can do, I can do as well. And Miggy loves it. Look at the blaster, the big fellow, having a good time. Acuna looking in the dugout right at <laughs> Miggy. Yeah, take that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's funny. See how Reese Olsen handles this inning. He didn't have long of a break. That was a pretty quick uh, inning for the Tigers' offense in the bottom of the third. I was thinking about that. Don't you think that helps him, though? Like, just get him right back out there, keeps him in his rhythm, keeps him kind of in, in tag, locked in in the strike zone? Yeah, I mean, you, you do like a little breather, you know? And, I mean, yeah, he's only 23 years old. But still, you like to settle in a little bit, maybe have a few words with Chris Fetter. You know, just to go over some things, and next thing you know, boom, you're right back out there. So, see how he handles it. Let's check out the T-Mobile coverage cam. This was... Uh, Earlier in the series, where uh, Acuna had asked for Miguel Cabrera a signed jersey. Of course, Miguel Cabrera obliged that and wrote some nice choice words on there. And you can see how much Acuna appreciates that jersey and, and holds it dear to his heart. A heck of a player. But then, uh, you know, also Acuna being a heck of a player in his own right, showing that respect to a Hall of Famer. Yeah, those are always special That's moments. That's beautiful. I got a chance to uh, play against my idol, Ken Griffey Jr. And I was gracious enough to go over and I asked him, can you please sign that bat for me? And you know what? Lo and behold, he signs the bat for me and sends it over to the clubhouse. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's always special. I, I, I know uh, I, I've got some, some bats, you know, from people that I, I truly respect. Do you have a lot of memorabilia? You know what? I, I, I don't have that much. No. No? I, I have to be honest with you. I was a big fan. I, I mean, growing up watching baseball and then getting a chance to be on the same field with these guys, I was, there was no question every time I met one of the stars or the guys that I watched play, I, I wanted their autograph. I'd ask them. I'd go up to them and ask them for their autograph. I got Sammy Sosa. I got Mark McGuire. I didn't get a chance to get Tony Gwynn's. I would have loved to get Tony Gwynn's. I've got Rod Carew's. I, I, you know what? There was a lot of people I wanted, but you know, I, I, I didn't get it. I just, nope, I'm not going to do it. And, I got Mr. Tiger. Some choice ones. Some Al choice K ones. Line. I got Alan Trammell, Kurt Gibson. You name them. I got it. Where's your, where's your uh, Todd Jones and Dan Petrie stuff? Well, yeah, you guys are next. Okay. All right. Now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers have vehicles arriving daily. Returning AZ plan lessees can lease a Bronco Sport Big Ben for $3.59 a month. Think Ford first. So you tell me, what kind of man cave do you have, Dave? You got a man cave with all, their, all your memorabilia or, or a couple other guys? You know what, let, let, let's just... Talk, yeah, this is this is a good 
good trip by Eric Haas just after that walk and then him spraying that change up first pitch to Albies. You know, he realized, hey, you know, you're starting to misfire here. Get off seat, getting out of seat. Yeah, you know, it's very unlike him. So they're just saying, well, I'm going to I'm going to get this under control before it, it, it gets out out of control. You know, Spire is out of control. So that's a great move by Eric Haas. Realize yeah, to get him back on track. Yep. You're already. But no, I've got I, I've got a few things. But but like I said, not not a lot. I mean, you know, just things that are special to me, and of course, uh, stuff from uh, from the 1984 season. I got I got George Brett's bat, which uh, is, is you know was just a menace, and Reggie Jackson, and uh, let's see what else do I have? Uh, well, the, the biggest one uh, near and dear to me is Cal Ripken Jr.'s bat. But also an Alan Trammell signed <laughs> helmet, batting oh, helmet. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Back from uh, when he finished second to George Bell in the uh, MVP vote in 1987. And so I told you, you're Al, you're the first to bat for Albies. He saw every pitch. Yep. At Olsen's arsenal. He's got a really good understanding how much, how fast that fastball is going to get on him. He knows how much breaks on that breaking ball. See what he does here at three one. Oh come on, that's a good pitch. Yeah, you wonder just you spraying the ball a little bit. And that's why he didn't get the call. Yeah. Eric Cox was set, set up, up outside. Outside. Yeah. yeah. That ball still catches the edge. You see it there. And because he misfired so far away from his target, he didn't get the call. That's, you know, Reese Olsen uh, doing that. And here's our Xfinity 10 high-speed pitch. But this is exactly what's going on with him hitting uh, the corners and getting those calls. And Eric Haas doing a good job of pitch framing for him. Seeing a lot of them. It was just, I think you're right on, Simo. That was set up outside and just kind of, you know, fooled uh, home, plate, home plate umpire Scott Barry, and he just said, oh, you know what? I think that ball uh, was in a little inside. Yeah, I thought that was a good, like I said, it's a good visit too there by Fett. Just coming down a little bit, refocus. You know, you're. Uh, just reminding him you're uh, with that good sinker. You're one pitch getting out of this. Get a two hopper right to Javi Baez. Yeah, but you also, if you're also now, you want to pay attention to Rosario at, first, at the second base. Albies has got his eyes on Rosario. If he takes off, believe it, he's going to go as well. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen Reese Olsen kind of get out of that that rhythm and start spraying it. We were talking about how under control he is and everything, mm -hmm. and how he, he nothing phases him. This is a big situation he's being tested with right here. Get to it. Get to it. Yeah, Kerry Carpenter didn't read that ball well off the bat. Didn't get a good break on it. Kind of stayed back a little bit too long. And then he made the second mistake of not being able to pick the baseball up and getting it to home plate. I mean, getting it to second base. And you can see there he stays back. That ball bounced in front of him. He doesn't glove it. That allows Albies to get to third base. Now that Albies is going to go here. As the outfielder, you've already made one mistake. You got to pick the baseball up, and you just got to throw it to second base to keep that hitter, that runner, from getting to second. Yeah, you got to keep that double play in order. Yep. And yeah, that uh, uh, Rosario was good base running too, though. I mean, he was good three quarters of the way to third base, you know, and anticipating that ball was going to land in front of Kerry Carpenter was able to score easily. I don't know. I think if Carpenter get a better break on that ball and recognize it, that like it's going to be dive. Right in, yeah, there's no question. He had a chance to make the play. Now it's going to be a tough play. But when you get a good jump and you read it right off the bat, that's a ball that you can catch.
I think this says something too. Just I know it's a double header, but uh, you know they're going to let Reese Olson pitch out of this. There's nobody warming up in the Tigers bullpen. You know, give him give him this a learning opportunity right here to pitch out of a jam. They're giving him a chance to pitch out of a jam against a good team. Yeah, these are valuable lessons for a young pitcher. I mean, the pitch count is getting up. You know, we're talking about all the foul balls that the Braves have had so far in this game. They get into two strike counts and they continually foul that ball off and it drives that pitch count up. They've been really careful too. the first two outings. I think that was where Reese Olson was was right about where he is right now with 75 pitches. There's another one right there. Pilar he would have struck out if he didn't swing at that. Yeah and just at that last second said "Ooh, that's coming back and just was able to get a piece of that. Well you can see the Tigers here. With one out, runs at second and third. They're playing the infield end. Reese is trying to induce some weak contact here. I don't know, partner. He's throwing him a couple of off speed pitches, yeah. a couple of sliders, and not been really located down. They've both all been up. See him late on late on those sliders though. He's you know he's seeing it really really deep. You so know, how about a good fastball right here. Fastball away. He's able to get to it. See that's just adding keeps adding to that pitch count. Keeps spoiling one spoiling one till you get one that you like. Well I feel like Olsen is doing his job though he's locating those pitches he's putting them in good lo in good locations. But again, the hitter, Pilar, the veteran hitter in the batter's box, is just spoiling him, trying to get himself a better pitch to hit. He does have a base open, but man, with Michael Harris, the second on deck, and as hot as he's been in the last week, hitting well over 400, already has a base hit in this game. I don't like that matchup no, to righty, left no. hand, lefty, righty. Still no action in the Tiger bullpen, and they're going to have to get somebody quick as that pitch count continues to rise. Yeah, Tyler Holton now getting loose, and it doesn't take them very long. Looking at Michael Harris's second numbers against right-handed pitching, though, he's under the Mendoza line. He's only he's hitting. 194. So to your point. Pilar wants that one back. Yeah, that was. That was a get me over slider. And Pilar was just a little out front. Does he dare throw a change up right here? He he threw one that uh, the two two. But look at that. There, but see that one just is. that one's right over the middle yep. of the plate. And the veteran hitter Pilar knows that that's the pitch he would want back. He's got to three and two. He's just, he's just you know can't be too fine with it. Well, Olson definitely makes the pitch that he needs to make. He gets the ground ball. Nathan not able to make a play there. That was an opportunity right here to get out of the inning. Just comes up on it a little bit up, too yeah. soon. Balls hit pretty hard off the bat. There's no question. There's a play that has to be made. Yeah, that's that one that you know, like you said, lift it up a little bit where you want to get that ball and quickly get rid of it and get it to home plate. Might have had a chance to tag third base. Well, no, not tag because he couldn't have been. There wasn't a force out there. It's a real stressful inning for Reese Olsen. Yeah, besides the pitch count climbing too, just a lot of pitches in this inning. 
You know, and I know that's something that when you get into the game, you don't like to have that pitcher, a young pitcher, throw, you know, 20, 30 pitches in an inning when you're already out to over 80. Yeah, you can see there, 32 pitches in this inning. Yeah, but then just go and back to the third. 29. Yeah. yeah, that's too big. Two big innings back to back. What is that 61 innings? I mean, 61 pitches in two innings. That's a lot. Well, that gets back to what we were talking about. That that quick, quick third inning in the Tigers' offense. You know, he didn't have that good time to reset and was just sent right back out there. And this has been one of those ones where, you know, it's very laborious and it, it's tough. Now he's in another situation here where you've got runners at first and third. You got a speed run in Harris, the second, in the batter's box. So you'd like for a hard ground ball, second base, shortstop. There's a good chance though he'll beat it out. That's a delay. Yeah, that was a nice delay steal there by. Pilar. Yeah. You saw Eric Cost checking the runner. He just that couple of couple of hops and he takes off and he was going to get in a rundown because Eric Cost saw him. He saw him going. Saw him going, check the runner and then made that throw down there. He was going to get into that rundown to see if he could get to get that runner in from third. Take a look at Pilar here as he slides to the back part of the bag. Baez so, blocking it too. Yeah, but that's a long way to, to, to be able to catch the baseball and to reach back and try to tag Pilar. So that's where you want to, that's where you, if you're going to slide, you want to slide to the back part of the base. Uh-oh. Yeah, and AJ's going to go get him. Says I, I, I don't care if it's left on right with the Cooney up there. Too many pitches in that inning and uh, got to stop the bleeding. Get uh, Tyler Holton into the game. See if he can stop the rally here and get the Tigers back in the dugout. I mean, one job, I leave, and and now now we're in some trouble. We got Tyler. Runs hitting 216. No rookies, first major league home run and three RBI game. Uh, we got a lefty against Acuna right here. We need some cutters in, get this guy out, and get this inning over. Let's go. Well, one of the things that Holton does well is that is that stay on the attack. There's one. He's been really good. Winning that race to two strikes. But like you said earlier, Jones, this lineup is different. They've got a lot of power. They've got a lot of contact. That's a dangerous combination. It is. It is. Relievers take a lot of pride in leaving that runner at second base. Even even with one out. You want to try to work like, like crazy to save to save that runner at second. By making some good pitches, look like Haas might be headed upstairs. No. He may not want to test this on, though. Oh. Ball wasn't hit that hard, but it was in the right place. Well, you were right, Jonesy. It's a cutter. And it's eaten up Acuna's hands, and he's just so strong that he's able to just fight that thing off. And Harris the second realizes nobody's getting to that ball. And see, for a hitter, guys, we believe good hitters get jammed. That means you trust your hands. That's right. You let that ball get deep. He muscles that ball out to right field, drives yeah, in the run. Right. That's right. Let's see if Acuna stays aggressive too. Now that their Braves are up seven to four. 
with the left-handed Holton on the mound. Is he going to think about getting in the scoring position? There's just that one out, big old lead over there. He might want to see a move. Yeah, I like that, Peaches. I, I think they're they're going to continue to be aggressive. Yeah. Especially one, the way the one, ball's flying here too today. Today, that's Joseph. Right. That's right. With a one-one count here, next couple pitches might be something to look at. Especially with the double, the the disengagement from the rubber. That's for for me. That would be that would be the baffling part. The it, the pitch clock I'm cool with. All that stuff is fine, but uh, I would make sure that I. Uh, I'd go on this pitch if I'm Acuna after he threw like he over is. there. Looks I'd like go right is. now. With Olsen, the scouting report is is you've got to crowd his hands. So with Olsen, the home run scouting report is is don't miss that spot. Josie, what do you got on this these sliding mitts? Now I mean we're gonna have to regulate how how big or how long they can be. Uh, yeah, that was something that they were talking about. There's a good play by Tort. All right, get in a run down, slow it down, slow it down. Take your time. Run them all the, all the way throws. back. Run them all the way back. There you go. There you go. Okay. Very good on that. Evening. Two outs, boys. Let's go. We we're down three, going to the bottom of the fourth. visit Arby's the following day that's tomorrow now and receive a free small order of curly fries Tigers got to that in the second inning Todd Jones was asking me for my credit card because he wanted to go shopping I'm not sure what that means Jones hey guys I'm down at the uh, Tiger Authentics here and uh, Peaches you were talking about uh, you've got some things from 1984 they got things from 84 down here they got trammel sign tickets they got uh, they got tram and Al and Jack Morris. They've got from, uh, let's see, they got plenty of Cabrera stuff. They've got game used uh, bats. They've got a bunch of nice little Riley Green section right here. There seems to be something from 2006, which is nice. Uh, Do they have anything down there, Jonesy? They got anything, Todd Jones down they there? Got, they got some stuff from 2006, but. Me and Simo were there, so we don't need that one. Um, <laughs> come down here. You got? Is there any Dan Petrie stuff here? No. Oh, there actually is a Dan Petrie no signed baseball Dan right Petrie here. Dan baseball. You know what? You shouldn't have, because I was going to bet money that there wasn't. Well, there you, sure you got is. To it it's too sitting quick. right there, ready to go. And only $3. Only $3. Well, and I paid them to put it in that well, display, right. that's, too, that's just what I for this. You only had you to know. pay them $3 for them exactly. to put it in here. <laughs> and then and then and then we run across a Todd Jones jersey that I only had to pay them five dollars to let me put it in there. Is so it, I mean, is that, that, Jones, that, that, Jones, that would still fit. Or actually. Jeff Jones. Is that Jeff Jones or Todd that Jones? It could be a Jeff Jones. <laughs> that could or, be a or Chipper. <laughs> you know, it could be Chipper. Uh, hey, is there a Craig Monroe anything here? Oh, looks like there is a bat, Simo. Oh, and you know is. what? It's pink. What do so you know? That's perfect. That's perfect. And then, Simo, you paid them $10 to leave it in there, right? I had to. I had to up my ante. That's right. That's right. But, the, hey, guys, seriously, they've got a lot of really cool. They got Miggy's game-used batting gloves. No, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's man. that's pretty awesome. You're not going to see what this. What does something like that go for, Todd? Anywhere. I'm not sure. I'm scared to ask. Don't ask, that, Don't ask. I mean, just you because. Got Ke you got Keating's credit card. Yeah, right? Just because it's so rare, right? I mean, there's. I mean, you're not going to find any of that kind of stuff. Listen, Keating's not going to mind. Keating's not yeah. going to mind. Keating says, yeah, burn it up. Burn He's that got credit plenty card. Of money. That's true. We got, we got good old Justin Upton. We remember him. Rookie of the year, Michael Fulmer. And, of course, shout out Tiger Stadium, signed by Jack Morris and Alan Trammell. Uh, just a couple of Hall of Sorry about it. The last year. This is a pretty nice little shop, gang. And uh, plenty of stuff to buy. So, Swing on down and check it out. And if you buy the Todd Jones jersey, I can sign it for you and the price goes way down. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> You'd personalize it though. I would. You know? Yeah. I would. As long as the name is like Tom. T O M. T O M. Something simple. Something simple. That's right. I don't know. These days the names are <laughs> they're out there. That's right. We got to get some runs, guys. This is where we're at now. Yeah, we're we got work to we're do. starting to get into the teeth of the game. Strider starting to uh, 
to work his magic. So let's see what we got going move, moving forward. Well, a lot of times that's what they tell us too as an offense when you're going up against the aces of staff, guys that have electric stuff like Strider. You got to try to get to them early. Well, the Tigers able to put some runs up early, but you really wanted to keep adding on, tacking on some runs yep, Travis because Wood. if he settles in, it can make for a long day. Yeah, and you look at the pitch count, you're thinking that, uh, boy, the Tigers are hammering around all over the ballpark, and he's only at 54. But good for Andy Abanez to lead that inning off, saying we're not going quietly. I know it was a big inning for you, and we're down a few, but you know what? We're, we're going to play a full nine here. So we don't care who you are or what your reputation is. We're, we're still going to we're going to give you everything we got. He's really starting to throw that slider. And that's the thing. You get those guys located. out there, establish that fastball, you know, and that's what the Tigers were jumping on. All three home runs were on the fastball, but now he's saying, okay, it's established. Now I'm going to my other stuff. There you go. Stay out of that double play. How about Strider and Darno going with the old traditional way of the finger signs. They're putting the signs down. They're not using the pitch comp. Yeah, you know, some some pitchers don't like the pitch comp for whatever reason. You know, if, if they, uh, you know, ball. they're moving too fast, possibly, uh -huh. you know, or they can't hear it. They don't feel comfortable with it. You know, and you just sit there and say, just you know, not try to get it all back at once, right? There's plenty of ball game left. You've got a runner in scoring position. Somehow find a way to get him in. You want to hit a home run? Go ahead. Yeah, that's but you know what? Just you know, good approach. Well, I like that the Tigers are not taking big swings. That's just a good slider there. It was, especially when you just missed 97 up. Same arm action, same arm speed. Now, that ball looks like a fastball out of his hand. And then when it gets to the hitting zone, you can see there the bottom just falls out. And that might be a little bit of difference between today's slider from Reese Olsen being a little bit one that kind of rolled a little bit as opposed to that one that's very sharp, like you said, out of his hand and diving right at the plate. I mean, he's throwing that slider almost 50% of the time. He's throwing that slider more than he's throwing his fastball today. And you probably realized the way the Tigers treated those fastballs <laughs> that I'd better start throwing something else or I'm going to be out of here pretty quick. Yeah, there was a lot of loud noise off that fastball. It was. That's like music to my ears, though, when I hear that back cracking like that. See if we can get back to doing just that. I wonder what trouble Jonesy's getting in though now. <laughs> you know what you know who, who he's searching for. I don't know if he has to go searching. I think it finds him. Or maybe he's using Keating's credit card over at that uh, Authentics booth. Well he could have gave me that Petri ball. Well, I got you here now. I mean, is there a ball up here? Yeah, I, absolutely. I always carry one. <laughs> yeah. Well, he left all his candy up here. I know, and I'm eating some of his Starburst right now. He'll be all right. He's got plenty up here, guys. I didn't know he loves sweets so much. Starburst. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but these nerds, I, I, I want to see you eat these. These gummy <laughs> clusters you got up here. Nerd gummy clusters. That's, that's where it's at. I, I, I've never seen them. I, I'm really looking forward to you introducing me to those. Yes, I will. I got a, I got a high school team here I want to introduce you to next inning. Oh, a little confusion there, hoping that they'd run into one another and drop it. That also able to make the final out. 
Wasn't sure if Matt Olson was going to get in there. Darno's right under it. Matt Olson at the last second comes in and makes the play. Well, let's update the FanDuel Sportsbook uh, same game parlay. The odds were a plus 352 when you saw it. We're already there. It was, uh, there you go. It's Abanias to have a hit, Torque to have a hit, and Ronald Acuna Jr., two or more total bases. All three are already there. If you wagered 100 bucks, you'd win an extra $352 back already, and we're only in the fifth inning. What trouble is Todd Jones finding now, TJ? Guys, here we go, guys. guys I, am, I am here with Oak Park High School. I got, I got Coach Allen with me. Coach Allen, introduce, introduce your team. All right, here we have Amir, we have Tyler, we have Dorian, we have Justin, and we have Javier. And, and what position is most represented here? Are we talking about pitchers? Are we talking about hitters? What we got? We got a combination. We got outfielders. We got a pitcher. We got an infielder. And we have a utility player that can play it all. I'm a, um, I'm, I'm a switch pitcher, you know? He can pitch with both arms. He's, he's a switch pitcher. How, 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 how did the season go this year? Well, we struggled a little bit. We uh, have a young team, uh, kids learning how to play baseball. Uh, we play in a tough division in the uh, Oak Lackett. O Oakland Athletic Association, so we play some tough teams, but the kids have fun. Uh, we're teaching them the fundamentals of baseball, and they're enjoying it. So, I so, so we got we got some big guys on the team, man. Uh, what do you do? What's your position that you play? Uh, my main position I play is middle uh, right field. That's the main position I play. But with me being able to um, adjust myself at every position on the team, I believe that my efforts I contribute this entire season. The reason why our team is where we at right now. I got you. So, real quick, tell me, tell me, like which one. One is your favorite tiger? <laughs> favorite tiger? Javier Baez. Yeah, Javier Baez. Javier Baez. Javier Baez. Baez. Have you guys ever ever heard of Todd Jones? No. Todd Jones, yes. Pitch. Yeah, there, there you go. One, one, <laughs> one dollar, one dollar for this guy here. Um, I, hey, we love you guys. We support you guys, man. We're happy. We're grateful that you guys are here at the park today. Bally wants to give you guys some swag. Is that cool? Yes, Trev, Trev, what you got? Got a little uh, Detroit here with a little Bally on the back, repping that. You guys can fight over the sizes. I don't know. That one's uh, extra large and a large. And then we got ourselves some uh, the old English D with the Bally on the side you guys can take those as well divide them up as you please as you see fit amongst yourselves and good luck guys keep it rolling guys thank you so much go tigers wait a minute you got to keep them around they got the first two outs oh they keep, got the first two around. outs so we're keep gonna around. keep rolling have you guys ever heard of craig monroe no no, yes. no. Have you, could you say craig monroe are you sure you've never yes <laughs> coach no he's, he, he's coachable have, have you ever heard of Craig Monroe? No, sir. <laughs> he was he was an outfielder. He was an outfielder that hit a bunch of home runs for us, took us to the World Series. He's a great player. What about what about you ever heard of World Series champion Dan Petrie? Yes. I think oh, I yeah. Yes. 84 Tigers. 80, 84 Tigers. Everybody knows the 84 Tigers. All right, stay tuned for the Miller right, Time update right after this message from our Have friends at Miller Lite we tell in today's broadcast if one of us has done something in our past it's going to be dredged up by those with whom we work and let's go back to a day in which Dan Petrie back when pitchers were allowed to hit and pitchers always felt like they could hit and were better hitters than they were actually had his first major league hit well let's take a look at it yeah I, I, can't want, wait I want to a see little it. swing by yeah Anal analyze this one. Let's take a look at this pitch. Oh, you take oh. a first pitch fastball right down the middle. That's a tough slider down and away, but bat you're battling pretty good right here. How about that oh. slider oh. off Going the plate away, it. showing off the athleticism, hitting that ball to left center field. And what look happened? Look at the wheels. What look happened the wheels. there? What happened? Oh, pop what was up George slide? Bell doing? A <laughs> nice pop-up slide by Petrie. Yeah, take the helmet off. Yeah. Yeah. That got you sweating hot, huh? What do you think? That was wow. a really good swing there. I was impressed with the fact that you were able to go get that I ball. had him time, just like you taught, <laughs> just like you teach. I saw everything that Les Lancaster had. I was just waiting for that curveball. I think he just fell down at second base. I think he was just winded, mostly. <laughs> well, you know me now, John. Yeah. I can't get moving <laughs> fast enough to, to slide. <laughs> I wasn't sure, Petey, if you were going to go. I was almost like, okay, you hesitated. 
But then right away you said, all right, well, I got to get well, the second Well, he dropped back. it twice. When he dropped it, he teased me the first time. When he did it the second time, I said, okay, that's enough. I'm going. Go. Yeah. That was a nice swing, Pete. Plus, plus George Bell um, was a heck of a player for Toronto and had many battles with him over the years. So, uh, you know, I had to had to take the extra base and get him an error. Oh, yeah. One. Yeah. Did you score? I did. Oh, I, nice. I did score. Yeah. How many hits you got in the big leagues? Uh, that was it, right? That there. was it. You know what? In, in, in the biggest thing, my first at bat, I was 0 for 1, as you saw there. My first at bat was off of Greg Maddox. And, oh. uh, yeah, and then, that's so, not right. But but I I never struck out. One for five. But I, when I was one for two, I was pitching terribly. You know, that's kind of at the end of my career. I was like, God, if I get released now, that would be great. I'll go down as a 500 hitter. I can break no, but I got three more at bats. Yeah. You wanted you don't, nobody wants to get released, partner. But you thought my right. numbers wouldn't be great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chasing that one out of the strike zone. Zach McKinstry, a little bit too anxious. Yeah, you can tell he's frustrated because he's done an excellent job of yeah, controlling the zone. That's, that's so rare. Him. Yeah. yeah. You can tell that Strider's just more effective. Kind of thinking about it a little bit too much because he's established that slider. Maybe he was thinking he'd get a slider there, and he sped him up with high fastball. Yeah, you're hoping to, you know, work that count, work that at bat, and get on there. Just again, if you're going to get back into it, just slowly but surely, just peck away at it, chip away. I don't Torkerson though in the last couple of games. Seeing the ball well, taking some really aggressive swings on fastballs inside. Got a couple good swings on two fastballs inside. And that one he'll be mad at, you know, himself right there swinging at that. Just frustrated because he's trying to control. It looks like he's trying to control that outside part of the plate. And thinking that, again, you know, he got that fastball that he hit the home run on. And just thinking, okay, here it comes again. And to your point, boom. Plus, it's a 2-0 count, too. It's a pretty good pitch. Yeah, I've been hearing the guys talk a lot about getting the ball closer to them. A little bit of respect, too, you know. Strider showing Torkelson. And man, well, I don't you know. Guys this guy's pitches, pretty You dangerous. guys remember. <laughs> he remembers that ball 400 some 36 feet away from home plate. Sure did. Going to the 3-1 slider. Now time for our Mr. Clean Magic Stats. Oh, I got what y'all did there. Oh, here we, we go. Are we talking about the ball head or are we talking about my numbers? Oh. Well, I didn't put this together. Who I was just told to read that. Partner. No, I wouldn't do that to you. All you right, know that. Well, I'll be Mr. Clean, but look, here's who I'd love to see. Joe Blanton. I'd send a limo to Joe Blanton <laughs> to the hotel to make sure he got to the ballpark safe because I did a number on him. But did y'all see those last two guys that I didn't want to see? Oh, my goodness. I could see those guys in my sleep. Freddy Garcia. You always told, told me. me about that. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea why, though. He's throwing me 95, 96. He had a slider and a curveball. I, I, couldn't, I can't explain it. I just, I, it was one of those guys that I just couldn't get to. You have those guys? I did. I had a lot of them. I had a lot of them, and I and I knew why. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any problem figuring that one out. No. But, but you know, I I got smart later later in my uh, career. Too bad I didn't think of it earlier. But uh, I started remembering. Um, you know what? The slower I could throw the ball to some of these guys. You know, the better. But look at Willie Horton. Yeah, you Willie know? Horton owned you pretty good. You know, and, look at and Bo right, Jackson. And right, though. right-handed hitters too. You know what? I, I faced him in spring training one time. I think I struck him out. Bo Jackson three times, four times, something like that, and he never forgot it. And that, that might have been one of the last times I ever got him out too. I guarantee you, Rob twenty. I guarantee you, Rob Deere sees you in his sleep. <laughs> I was going to say Bo Jackson used to send a limousine to my house to pick me up. <laughs> Pete Petrie oh, here today. <laughs> Make sure he gets here safe, right? <laughs> He's still pitching today, right? <laughs> he had a grand slam off of me in Kansas City. I remember one time, too. Yeah. Ah, starting to chase that slider down. Oh. Called out, and there's 
Ground Let's it see. And he drills this one deep. Could be. It is upstairs. Well, for Mark McGuire. Yeah, he, he, he hit a lot ready. of them. And here's a fly ball to right. It's oh well my hit. Goodness. And this one is in the second deck. It looked like it was George Kell thought win. it was leaving. Let's see. I didn't. I didn't see who that second one was. Yeah, that was our Comerica Bank game summary. Dave Parker. Okay. Yeah. That. Uh, I don't know how many I gave. You know, Mark McGuire. Though I. I, I remember. I never remember getting him out. No. Never. And then you go back and you look and you. Well, wait a minute. He only hit. I forget what it was. It was in the 200s. I did get him out, I, but I never remember because it, it, you always remember the negative. You always remember. Right. I either walked him or he hit a home run off me. But I did get him out a couple times. All right. All right. We're now, one here's swing the away. Big blow. That's right. One swing away from tying this game up. Maytons had some big hits, big home run swings here. This season for the Tigers. That's that pitch right there that that's up and away from from Mayton. He's a fastball loves that fastball. He's getting a steady diet of all those breaking pitches but it's that one that's kind of up and away that's a little bit of a hole. He doesn't quite get to. Trying to hit that upper right hand qu quadrant there with two strikes. Yeah, that's a tough pitch to get to, even when you're going good. Get that ball down. Make a mistake right here. You see what he's trying to do, too. Get him to swing at that pitch that's up and away, and then he starts that change up, thinking, okay, here comes that fastball. So he's throwing it out of that same tunnel, you know, trying to get Mayton to chase that, thinking it's a fastball, and just uh, throws the change up to tailing down and away from him. Good at bat. Man. Yeah, but take a look at the hot zone, the home runs where he does damage. Wouldn't be surprised if Strider, Strider tries to stay down here. That's it. It's a good at bat. He was down at count 0 2. And worked him a, worked himself a walk. That's a good at bat. They're going to have to go out and talk to him, too. Get the bases loaded here. Give him a little bit of a breather. That's that difference. They're looking like they're going to just. They're let looking him at each go. other over in the yeah. dugout. I can look down and see. Oh, here he comes. Dang, Petey, you're good. Yeah, that's the. Got to give the bullpen a little time to get, uh, you know, loose out there. And now a message from Rally House. Play ball, Michigan. Shop the latest in Tiger style with your favorite brands and throwback designs. Rally House has gear for every fan. All right, partner, talk to me. You get a mound visit from the pitching coach. In this situation, what is he telling you? What, is, what are y'all talking about right now? Well, I think it's just, you know, again, one of those trips to make sure that the bullpen can get loose, you know, but just to, just to remind him, too. Hey, look at, you know, you got, uh, you got two outs. You know, you're just, you're, you're a hitter away from getting us back in there. Just... Get back, slow down, but it's really more just to give him a break, just to give him a breather and get his focus back on to get Andy Abanias out. And you see that pitch count now for Strider at 90. You don't quite see the same bite to that slider, that same, that same oomph to that fastball. Looks like he's also starting to lose the strike zone. Yeah. Now, what are you thinking? 2 0? I'm looking dead red. And, and, and you're coming unglued? Middle end. I don't want to get too big here. Okay. I just want to be short to it. Oh. Yeah, but I can't drive that one no, anyway. No, 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 no. I can't drive that one. I can't just, hit it hard. Just look at it right at the top of the zone. So that's a good take. 
a little bit more down and a little bit more out over the plate is the one that I'm looking for right here. Gets away, gets away. Yep, here comes Torque. You see a couple of those get yeah, away. Yeah, there's a couple balls there. Yeah. Darno just not keeping in front of He's been really good behind the plate, but that's a little slider that Strider spikes. Hits way out in front of the plate. Darno not able to keep it in front. Lose the sight of it briefly. Yeah, and Torque scores easily. Takes away the force play, too, so you got runners in scoring position if they're going to have to make an, a play on Abanez. Well, now, Boy, too, same it, situation, 3 1. Yeah, but it changes your approach now as a hitter. All the base hit drives in two. Ooh, <sighs> yeah. That's the pitch you're going to yep. want back. But it looked like, looked like it was short. Good it short was swing, right? short. Just, you can just see right underneath it. It's a game of inches. What do you think, fastball or slider? Slider. I'm going to say fastball because he hadn't thrown that slider for a strike. Oh, got it oh, by him. right down got the by middle. Him. So Abanez must have been thinking what I was thinking. Run closer, though. Run closer. Game, the over-under in total run scored was eight. Now that uh, we've had 12 runs scored, the Updated live total is 15 and a half. That's the uh, live total runs scored wager in uh, today's game. It's our television version of Waldo. Where's Todd Jones now? Hey guys, what's up? I found some new friends. We're out here in the uh, carousel, out here at the food court, and I'm sitting down with some buddies of mine, gonna play a little bit of trivia. Really quick, first question guys, what's your name? Jake. Brandon. Rich. Patrick. Awesome. Got that one right. That's good. Uh, what are we doing out here today? Just hanging out. You guys, you guys have got a, got a big business, a big thing going on where you got 50 people? Yeah, we got a large group here for Cummins Meritor. Awesome. Awesome. So let's, let's start it out here with a layup question. Really easy one. Have you guys ever heard of Craig Monroe? Yes. Yep. You have. You're a winner. You get oh, you right off Matt the Jones right. Very generous. Right off the bat, there's a tiger hat right there. Congratulations. <laughs> now, what position did he play? Left field. Okay, so he might really know, Craig. That's one in one in your column there. <laughs> that's so, strong. So uh, let's go. Let's go to the ne let's go to the next question. Give that. So give that hat to your best friend. There you go, Rich. Oh, okay. So these two got you got all right. So then let's let's do another question. Uh, what was the first year of this beautiful stadium that we are in today, known as Comerica Park? 2001. 2001 it was oh. just just a little bit. 2000. A little bit off was 2000. You're right, 2000. But uh, let's go to the, let's go to the headset. No, no, no. We can't do that one. So then we're gonna go with final question, and it's for two hats. So uh, we want to know what was the last year of Tiger Stadium in Detroit at Michigan and Trumbull. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> 1999 from the table. We're going to go ahead and give it to him, guys. There you go right there. We're struggling with, with math, but we got the name right. Well, it seemed like a trick question. I got to be honest, Todd. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> the way you asked it. It was a little bit of a trick question, but yeah. but if it, it's, it's where would Grant, who's buried in Grant's tomb type thing. So uh, that, that's what I was going with. This segment is really awesome, and uh, I am killing it. So I'm headed back up to you guys, man. We got to get some runs. Let's go. Let's go, Tigers. Let's go. Johnny's pretty good out there with the people, huh? He is. That was a, that that was was pretty good, good. Yeah, that was all right. I like the, the buddy over there going, I <laughs> Yeah, while Jonesy was having all that fun, Tigers got two outs here. Uh, Brendan White making his major league debut. First hit batter he faced, Ozzie Albies, and uh, was able to strike him out. Another good at bat by him, but he was able to sneak a fastball by him. See those numbers down in AAA. He was, he was the 27th man earlier in the year and did not get a chance to get in that gets it, get into a game. But that's the pitch that He's going to rely on. He's known to have that real good slider, and, and I can see why. That was a real good one out of the hand of Brendan White. Well, I hope he kept that ball, that first strikeout. 
Is that one for the mantle, right? That's it. Uh, absolutely. Not a bad guy to get it off of either. You know, and, a and AJ said he felt bad that he didn't get him in that double header, and he says, "You're up here now. We'll, we're going to get you in." You know, that's got to be odd. You come up, you get dressed, you're, you got service time. You got a day in the big leagues. <laughs> yeah. You were around for, you know, on the roster, and uh, but hadn't appeared in a game. So I, I'm going to get you in. Good for AJ. Ooh, another one. Look at good inning. Good inning. A couple of strikeouts now. Come up, a couple runs. Stacked with Lowe's, Miguel Cabrera homered in the second inning, his first homer of the season, and he joins a list now of five Tigers who, beyond the age of 40, have hit homers. And one of those names is one of Dan's former teammates, Darrell Evans. Well, it was a great moment if you missed it. It was a fastball, 97 miles per hour inside. And Miggy deposited to left center field and gave you the strut. <laughs> With that serious look. Little. Jesse Chavez coming in to pitch for the Braves take over for Strider and he's just a couple months shy of 40 years old. Yeah, he's been getting it done for a long time. Yeah. He was my teammate in Pittsburgh for a little bit. He's a young fella. But again, he's always been able to keep you off balance. Has never really overpowered guys, but has had solid pitch ability. Changes speeds, adds and subtract. Look at that strikeout rate over 30%, 31. Locates. I think everybody, you see. Jesse Chavez and, and Miguel, they, they exchanged a glance, too, before this at-bat. I, I mean, I think it's just that respect. Guys doing battle against each other for a number of years. Oh, man. Oh, no. Wow. I bet that got him right on. Looks like it might have got him right on that shin. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know if he's going to be able to stay. Nah, that ball came say, off the bat at 99, almost 97 miles, almost 100 miles per hour. And they don't, they're not going to mess around with his landing foot either. I think they're going to have to get somebody up. Yeah, they'll be able to bring the yeah, guys limping around pretty good. Cam doesn't even look like he put weight on it. Wow. How do you protect yourself? I mean, that ball came in hot. Throw, throw it and duck. I know it's <laughs> right. You know. I think wow. when the balls hit that this, hard, this is not you either get hit yeah. or you don't. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's what you can do is like try to keep it out, keep it away from your vital organs, right? <laughs> but yeah. your, I mean, there's some ways you just, some way you just can't get out of the way. I've been. <laughs> He's a mess, as most goalies are, but. And, and he and I have talked about this podcast idea, but it's been tabled because we're afraid of the things that might be said on it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's some things you talk about and some things you just hand motion through and things like that. But, you know, there was a lot of Tiger fans. I can remember when I was pitching, they were saying, you're number one, but they were using like the middle finger. It was, it was weird. But we've got a chance here. We're sitting in here with a, in, in a tie game with you the tie like, and run at the plate. You didn't like the, the Todd Jones talk. You're going to quickly you get sure. out of that one. Yeah, well. That was good, though, Todd. Did good? There's, uh, Thanks for staring, sharing your starburst, by the way. Oh, I just, you I know, just, these nerds are pretty good. They are pretty good. I just always didn't want to ever. The sweet and sour. Share. I like the nerds. Yeah, yeah, sweet and sour is where it's at. A little easier. Yeah, all right, that's good. Your, that's good. That's two minutes. The uh, gummy clusters, folks. They're it, easier on your teeth. Yeah, I, right. I mean, for me. Yeah, they yeah. will. They will. They will definitely give on there because they're they're gummies.
You see, and I also know you've been doing a little CrossFit. Is, well, this, is this why you work out, so, though? I mean, because so, I need to know the story. This is a lot of sugar. I know, but you're, you're, you look amazing. And Peaches, you look good, too, pal. And, you know, I just, I just realized when I was, when I was active um, as a player, you try to, you, try to, uh, you know, eat uh, or, or run off more than you eat. So now that I'm not playing, um, I do. My son is a level one CrossFit instructor. And he got me hooked on the CrossFit. So CrossFit in the D is right down the road on Woodward. And uh, I've been down there five or six times, and uh, it's a lot of fun. The fun thing about CrossFit is 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 it's in a class yeah. kind of atmosphere. So everybody kind of goes through the same thing, and you all get exhausted together. So There's my good friend there, Riley Green. Yeah, Riley's back. Hanging out in the top. Step yep. up there. Yep. And what's, the I mean, what's not to, what's not to enjoy if you're Riley Green, right? He's, he's a great player. He's going to be a really good he's player. He's shortly, he's shortly coming back. In the meantime, Jake's at the, Jake's at the play hitting, saying, I got you today, bro. I, I was got talking you today. to Riley just a couple of days ago, and he's like, man, I miss it. I can't wait to get back. Yep. He's ready to go. Looks like he's got a hobby. Oh, he's running Why the he's camera. Rehab, just like you, Todd. Would that be, is that considered low three? I'm <laughs> not sure. It, yeah, no, low third. well done, Joe. You. Camera Don't one, you. low third. Yep. Man, you do it all. He's got a career. You're up here, you're in with the crowd. I, you're now, directing. I will say this, once the once the camera guys, like, show you how to, how to try to track the ball, they used to let me track it during batting practice. I can't do that. No. Those, guys, those guys on the camera are amazing, and that's not even because I work here. That's really, really cool how they can keep up, track a ball, uh, you know, keep keep cameras on everybody that's important during the during the inning, things like that, to just help us explain kind of why why is there all this controlled chaos going on out 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 in front of us. And well, that's what's that's what's good about players is we can show them little bitty things that may not, that they may not can pick up on. Well, Jones, I had a tough time tracking the balls there, but coming off the bat to pose a team. Sure. Trying to hit left field. Sure. I had a center fielder in Colorado <laughs> by the name of Preston Wilson. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great center fielder. Uh, I promise you, I stood. I stepped off the mound one night in Colorado, and he was sitting in a in a three point stance, like like a track <laughs> athlete, getting ready, getting ready to head in the gap. Because uh, that's that's when it was going rough, folks. You can look those numbers up there. I would just play back. Nice. I would just play back. When you were yeah, but in Colorado, ending. you had to be on the concourse to, <laughs> to play back there. So, um, you know, but that's a tough place to pitch, fellas. It that's is. A, that's that a tough place, a tough place yeah. to make a living. What do you think about the dimensions here, them changing? I think they're finally, court? I feel like they're finally uh, fair. somewhat fair. I right? do, too. I do, too. Because there's a little bit of the park you can still kind of pitch to if, you, if you're good enough to use the whole park. Nice job there by Rosario. Yeah, it's a good way to get I out mean, of I'm the I'm sorry, inning. that's Pilar. He's uh, hiding that ball, hiding the sun. Well done. We'll see you guys on the other side. In this game raises money for prostate cancer research. So far, over $484,000 has been raised. You can make a pledge by going online to pcf.org forward slash home run challenge. Four homers hit in today's game, three of them by the Tigers, and yet the Tigers are down 7-5 as we have now found our way to the seventh inning, guys. Yeah, the Tigers, though, just down two. Brendan White on here in his debut, just keeping that, that game close and just giving the Tigers a shot. Getting into that brave bullpen a little bit, too. The unfortunate uh, knocking out of Chavez on that comebacker. Just keep it right here, right, Jonesy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's just like Tyler did a couple nights ago. Yeah. You want to yep. want to continue to give your 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 guys a chance to a chance to keep chipping away and knock them out late. You know, saw the uh, Tigers get walked off two games in a row in Chicago. So nothing better than to walk off the Braves two games in a row. Where's that one going, Jonesy? Keep it in the park. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, Kerry thinks he yeah, should have had felt that like one. he tracked yeah. it. Man, is I mean, Michael Harris is on some kind of a tear. My goodness. And he hits ninth. I, oh, I mean, he hit one off of Tyler Alexander. 
He pulled that one. Look at this breaking ball. Now on that's the a, outside part of the plate. That was wow. a, that's a much different swing than when he got that base hit in second base. He was out there at the same time, but on that home run, he went with it to left field, and that was a good piece of hitting. I, and I think Kerry feels like he didn't time that just right. Right off his fingertips, I think. You saw his glove just it caromed off. I think he thought, man, didn't time it right, or he might have thought he had it just because it felt the ball brush off his fingertips. You know, Acuna Jr. might be turning into one of these guys in the league in baseball, really. And and if it wasn't for Trout, then Otani, or Tan, or Otani, then Trout, they would be in this discussion. But this guy is probably, I feel like, is is turning into one of these guys that is going to have a difficult time having anybody protect him because he is such a dynamic, dynamic player. For instance, my 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 example of that was was Bonds in 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 2000 you know two 2003 yeah, sure. things like that when he was he was doing all the stuff that he was doing, but but there just wasn't anybody that you could put behind Acuna, and behind Bonds for that matter and and my gosh Olson is an amazing hitter, but but Acuna is just one of these guys in a close game that that they're just gonna have to discontinue pitching to they they've got to. The league. I'm talking about baseball. I'm not talking about the Tigers today. I'm talking about this guy's heading into that category, Peaches, where it feels like, um, you know, he's going to get in that seventh inning and you're going to start seeing stuff out of the zone. And so then it's going to be a be an interesting thing. Can he take the walk? It, 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 I remember Bonds being intentionally walked with with the bases loaded too to force in runs rather right. than have him, you know, uh, I remember back. having the having the blessed you know opportunity to play with play with Gary Sheffield Gary Sheffield would take the walk he didn't mind that at all I played with King Griffey Jr. King Griffey Jr. There he goes to not like the walk I yep. mean that's the other aspect of the game I mean that that bonds maybe quit doing um, later in his career but a good jump here looks back in and then steals this bag easily but yep. you know to have that combination of of power and speed I mean what a weapon yeah, there's no doubt about it, and that's I, you know, that's why he's a he's a he's a premier guy. There, there's no question, man. And it's and it's good for the game, you know, to just keep and keep them healthy, keep keep, too, keep getting guys healthy, and keep getting keep keep letting them develop and let them letting them become superstars. You know, too. I just keep thinking back to you know all the stuff we showed early in the game about you know the little game and ship between Miguel Cabrera and and and, and Acuna also. You know, and, and, and when you look up to somebody like Miguel Cabrera and see the numbers and the career that he has put together and you kind of take that upon yourself and saying, you know, uh, you know, that's my countryman. And, and you know what? I want to be like that guy. He's Miguel has, has set that example. I want to be like that guy. I want to I want to play like that. I want to I want to have a long career and and put up the numbers that Miggy's put up perfectly positioned. there. Yeah, that was a great play. Yeah. Well, Mr. Acuna's got an oven mitt on, and I got my oven mitt right here. We're all uh, we're all excited about this. So, uh, <laughs> number one fan, and 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 that's what Simo was talking about. If we keep extending these oven mitts out into this this area here, everybody's going to be safe. So they're going to have to probably uh, address that the way they address the pitchers on the pitch clock just instantly coming set. These are little tweaks that Theo Epstein and Rob Manford are very, very good at with the commissioner's office listening to the people up front offering suggestions because that's a clear three or three, four inch wow, difference. Wow, that is. Because if if you're going to do an instant replay, they can see that and they can get those extenders and they can order them double large or whatever. And I get it. You play every day and you want to protect your hands and that's important. But they should they should probably look at Maybe trying to regulate those, but they are pink, which remind me of Starburst. I'm gonna have. <laughs> but they, I mean, they did it in hockey too with goalie, goalie pads. You did know? they? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, making, uh, you know, guys would come out with just you know huge pads and shirts, and you know there there was no room to shoot in that, so they made uh, regulations on that. 
in, in uh, requiring them to wear smaller equipment. See, and that's where I don't know anything about any of that, Dan, because I'm from Georgia. We didn't play a lot of hockey. Not a there. lot of hockey down there, huh? And and so my question Florida, is, Florida, they got a lot of hockey in Florida. Well, that's true. But they're all I mean? they all they're all retired. Well, all, you know what? All from uh, they all play baseball down in Georgia. You know that. Well, football's well, big. I don't want to brag, big, but you know, you know but there's a lot of baseball down in Georgia. That's for sure. Yeah. Amateur baseball in Georgia is in good hands. Been down there lots of times at East Cobb. I think that, that's not too far from you, right? It is. Yeah. It is not that far. There, there, there's a new development out there called Lake Point, and and they play. There's 16 or 18, 30, maybe 20 uh, artificial turf fields, and they roll out five games a day in the summer. And there's a big tournament. There's a called the World Wood Bat. Every college coach that's watching this broadcast knows exactly what I'm talking about because there's 150 and 200, 200 head coaches that go watch that those guys for a week that's not good come on stay in He's here that carrie's one. got there that go. one all right there we go fighters chance coming up is the fire law seventh inning stretch get ready to sing stream your tigers on bally sports app presented by t-mobile jonesy that was that, I mean, was, that really was really good. good dude. I'll tell I've you, been watching I, Chef. I'll tell you one thing. There's, there's one Chef thing that Valley Sports bet. won't do, though. What's that? Yeah, what is that? Oh, Trey uh, Todd Jones. Trey Todd Jones. Trade. See, you're here to stay, buddy. Trade. That was Jones. You are com. here to stay. That was, that was the trucker hat. My my daughter, Abby, out in Dallas sent that to me. She works at Valley See? Southwest. And uh, she happened. She She's co-producing my broadcast today so love you honey thanks for that <laughs> ah, love, see? that was a <laughs> yes i don't know about that is she the better of the two uh i don't want to say that you know uh, <laughs> you know the producer here Diz, you know has a, little bit, job. has a little bit more to do with my paycheck <laughs> <laughs> and, He's done a and, good job. and abby makes me buy pizza all the time when i'm out there so i got to keep in the pizza funds so we got torque going here let's go <laughs> he just missed that one gang Wow. I tell you what, so prior to Riley getting hurt, I felt like he was really starting to turn the corner and 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 make adjustments, right? And I and I feel like I feel like Torque is kind of trending kind of that way. Y'all did a great job of when I was home watching, did a great job about talking about how hard he's hitting the ball and tough luck and all this stuff. And even AJ was saying that and nobody wants to hear, hey, go get him next time, right? But but uh, you can start to see that that he's laying off pitches that he used to swing at, right? Mm -hmm. And he's taking counts deep into the into the at bat, and uh, it's starting to pay off. The one percent each day is starting to starting to see some starting to see some uh, some results from that. There's no question about that. Matt Virlin is pinch hitting here. That's one of the things that A.J. Hinch has done well. Pushing the right buttons. Trying to get these guys in favorable matchups. Likes the righty on the lefty, well, the righty on lefty matchup here with Veerlin. Had some good at-bats in the first game of the series. They did this situation la uh, in the first game of the series where they brought Minter in in the seventh to clean that up. Fly ball to right for Mr. Acuna. He's got that. You know what else I'm starting to notice around the game of baseball, though? It's just a couple of guys that stand out. Mookie Betts used to play center field, right? He was infielder, then they moved him to center field. Acuna Jr. plays center field, and they have moved him to right. Seen a lot more athleticism in the in right field now. Guys being able to, like center fielders moving to right field and being really good at it. How about, how about Mookie Betts? He's one of my guys that I love to watch play, but playing the infield, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. playing second base. I mean, the Dodgers have a problem at shortstop. He'll move to shortstop. I mean, you know, Mookie Betts, talk about an athlete, man. But well, you're talking about the stars of the game just starting to, like, accept, okay, listen, how, yeah. can I, how can my team be better? Well, if I have to move to right field or move to left field, I'll move so that we can be a better team. I because, like that mindset. Because with, with Harrison Center, you can put Acuna in right, then Harris can go to left center, and you've got two center fielders right. covering two thirds of the field. Then, if your if your left fielder, say you make a trade deadline guy for, you know, a like a guy who is just a banger, right? Like like he's not necessarily 
you know he's not out there for his defense it's and and like first first word that comes to mind is Kyle Schwarber yeah. isn't a, a big big power you know I mean so so you you can put him you can put him if you have to in the field and with those two guys they can cover help cover Baez with a hit that's nice looks like we got another pinch hitter here but before we get there how about this fastball up he likes that ball up there, man. He, he can get on planes. He does. I mean, he's a good bad ball hitter. Yeah. And he thinks when anything you throw up there, he can hit it. He can hit it hard. And you try to change that and try to make him more patient. It, it, it takes away the hitter that he is. It doesn't allow him to be, I believe, the violent hitter that he's been throughout his career. Watch his first pitch on Zach Short here. Remember when he hit that pinch hit home run in Kansas City? It's on a slider, right? And mm, good change up. Is that change up? up? Yeah, looked like a change up. I don't know. I I think maybe maybe with the guys with a big fluent aggressive swing, maybe you dial it up or turn it down in the count or during the game when 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 the situation might dictate. Um, you know, maybe maybe that's something that uh, certainly you don't want to take away from his power. That's like when David Ortiz was playing and there was a shift. Everybody's like, you know, why doesn't he just hit it over there towards shortstop where nobody's at? And it's because, you know, that's what they'll take that all day long. So, you know, to your point, maybe maybe you don't want to take the aggressiveness away. But, uh, you know, because he's such a he's such a dominant He's such a dominant player. And moving forward, he's the face of the franchise. And we want him to uh, we want him to develop and 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 be be all that he can be. Yep, your stars gotta be stars. I like this. Just got under it. Yep. Going to the eighth, gang. Bad guys are winning. We're gonna do a little flashback here. It's Simo up against Todd Jones. Coming I mean, to roll over that pitch, but look at the hustle there, beating it out, driving in Demetri Young. Yep. And then in 2008, up against Minnesota, how about that breaking ball? That's a good pitch, Jonesy. I just deposited into left field for another knock. For Miggy, an, for keep your, Miggy, keep your, keep my let me keep my shirt in, man. Yep. Listen, we always enjoy playing against your teammates. Playing, I mean, there's almost love between yeah. us. Yeah. But anytime you have those moments where you get me or I get you, you're fun. They're fun to banter back and forth about. They are, and and we've had teammates where uh, we've had teammates where we set up dinner. In batting practice, right? Right. But then it it goes bad for one guy or the other, and he calls over. He's like, "Yo, I'm not going to dinner, man. I gotta ice my leg or something like that." Do you remember remember stuff like that? Oh, it happens. It does. Oh yeah, man. Hadn't seen you in six months. Can't wait to go. Oh, uh, Chili's. Want to go to Chili? Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Chili's. And then and then uh, you know I go out there and I blow a save or something like that, or he takes me deep. I'm like, oh, well, if we're going, you're buying. Here's what I know, Todd Jones. This is the big leagues. You take people to big league dinners. You're not taking them to Chili's. Let's be honest, dude. You guys are going to Morton's. You're going to Gibson's in Chicago Steakhouse. Come on. Okay, so so if I'm going in, De in Detroit, I don't even know. Can I can I say brand names of restaurants? Um, I, you know there there's a lot of there's hey the food the food scene, food scene in in Detroit and out in Birmingham. Is uh, is really really good out it in is. Troy, things like that, uh, you know. But but uh, you know, Chili's is representative of uh, of whatever city we're in and wherever it's at. But uh, there was all so when I was with Boston Red Sox, and we're going a little back here. Uh, I was with them in 2003, the Aaron Boone year, the year before they won the World Championship. Thanks, Theo, and uh, didn't sign me back. And um, Jason Jason Veritek calls a team dinner. Mm -hmm. We're 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 coming from Boston, going to Arizona, 
there is a we're at the hotel in Arizona. There is a steakhouse right there. And he says, do not be late. Pedro Martinez was late. Mm. And Pedro Martinez got stuck with the bill. <laughs> the, the entire team. <laughs> and Veritech knew. He's like, hey, Petey's late. Everybody order up. And they ordered up. $24,000. Ooh, that's, that's a say, big one. It was. There's some expensive bottles of wine floating around in that one, wasn't there? It was. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but, the, but the creme brulee, man. Creme brulee is good. There I go with the sweets again. You know who else would do that for here when I was here with the Tigers? It was Bobby Higginson. Yes. Higgy would call. They would put together a team dinner, and we'd go, like, even opening the first day we were playing in Kansas City, we have a team dinner to kick off the season. Yep. And Higgy would always pull out his card, man. So, And then I'm, I'm here, and on this last road trip, there was an off day, and, and uh, one, of the players, one of the players invited the entire team for an event and picked it up. Javi. Javier Baez. Well, yeah. you know, it's out there. It's out there. I don't want to air They went on a cruise. Yeah, he got yeah. the, he rented he the boat. Jason the cruise. He called Jason Hayward, and, yeah. his, his yeah. guy, and they hooked it all up, and he took the boys out on a nice boat See, ride. See, and that, and I'm telling you, though, those kind of stories, you know, when you're old and old and done and smell like cabbage like me, right, those are the kind of memories that, that you live on, that live on for the rest yeah. of, your, of your life, that, that that somebody thought enough of, of, of the team mm -hmm. to make it important enough to let's do something together because, I mean, we're around each other more than our, more than our families nine months, ten months out of the year, and then he took it upon himself, and that's, that's awesome. What was the best gift you got from, like, a veteran? Did you ever get somebody ever buy you anything? Um, or were you the one just doing the buying? I – no – I mean, you know, I, I, I took care of the guys in the bullpen that took care of me one year, and and uh, I was really grateful to do that because they, they, uh, they were a big part of that. And and you know, when runner goes, <laughs> slide that in. I'm you know talking oh, yeah. about. I'm the worst, you know I'm the worst about. color guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry about that Mid one, guys. Well, Josie, 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 Josie. The reason I asked is because I had Demetri Young was obviously like my big brother when I was here in, in Detroit. He bought, We went to Tampa. He got us a limo, and we rode around, and we ended up going to the mall. I think it's International Mall in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Do we go in this jewelry store? He buys me diamond earrings. Wow. Two carats in each ear. Come on, man. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> Come on. Now my, I closed the hose. Now I don't have even have earrings, but I still got them put up. That's the, incredible. I remember when you had them. You remember? I do. When I first started broadcasting, I had these big old diamond I earrings. Do. Yeah. And they Those were from Demetri yeah. Young. Yeah. Well, that, that I, I guess that's how much it's changed. I don't. I can't remember a story. <laughs> you got well. Like, you like you that. and me generations rookies. What did y'all do for the rookies? You went and bought them suits. No. Well, he bought me suits, too. Oh, y'all didn't do that? No. And, so and when a rookie would get called up before the rookies got $10 million, right? No. I mean, 1989 was when I got drafted, and that was the first year that everybody in the first round got a hundred grand. Okay? Yeah. So when the rookies get called up in my generation, you know, the older guys took care of the young guys because they didn't. They were coming out of Tucson with a, with a $99 yeah. sport coat. Right. So they would take him to New York, and, and the guy there – Joe, I remember that guy, Joe. Yes, Joe would Joe would take care of every player that came in and and hook him up with two or three suits. The older guys took care of it, and that's and that and and you pay it forward. Higgy also bought me an expensive watch. I remember, can't even say the name of it. It didn't have diamonds and all that stuff on it, but it yeah, was yeah, just yeah. a that's big when you know, league. That's when you know as a pan man. panerai, I panerai, know. yeah, something yeah. like that. And and it and so you pay it forward. You have to. Yeah. Did the same thing. My Cut rookie. My, we just. Well, the Arizona Diamondbacks were just in town this week. Much trouble right there. Yeah. Wash is going to send him. He's not running hard though. Get him a third. Yep. Got him. Ooh. Out. That's good. Well, they're going to be aggressive. Yeah. And you like that about those guys throttle you keep the pedal down that's a good job though and by Eric Haas going to get that yeah. baseball getting making a good throw to Banez 
to him. get him. Yep. Albies being maybe a little bit too aggressive. You know that that swim move right there, though. I mean, it looks like everybody does that. I and mean, that looks super be, difficult from a, know, yeah, from I mean, a runner. Yeah. Is that is you that know? hard to? Peaches, you had the pop-up slide. We showed that. Well, I said I didn't have the oven mitt, or I would have went head first. It would have went head first. But the swim move is is impressive. That's that's good I, stuff. I mean, Jonesy, we'll, we'll, Jonesy it's we'll called being athletic. It's called being athletic. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what it's called. I think it's I, I think we're both athletic, but we're a different kind of athletic because we can explain, re- please. We can repeat. Okay, so what I mean about being athletic, like I'm like, listening. would you consider Tiger Woods like athletic, like a pro golfer, a- athletic? Yes. Yeah. Because he's able to, to to like manipulate the golf club, and he can he can repeat and do the same thing every time. So there's some degree of athleticism with that, right? Right. Same thing with a pitcher. We're in control of our body, and we can repeat those mechanics all the time, which makes us somewhat athletic. Now, we're obviously like I'm repeat. obviously not going to take the soccer ball away from Lionel Messi, right? Okay. Right. So that's a different kind of athleticism, and I'm not going to be able to go jump up on left field and rob a ball. Because Mariano Rivera proved that he blew his knee out doing that VP in Kansas City. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but but yeah. Uh, you know, so it's a different kind of athleticism. But I will say that pitchers might not sometimes. Although pitchers this generation, they look so much better in their uniforms than. Stay up. Oh, 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 what a play! Out of way, Torque. Out of baby, Torque. Out of boy. I think even the Braves are jumping oh, up and that down. Acuna, was sick. Acuna is jumping up and down like what a play! I think they're chirping at him. Look at that. I mean, just getting over. That was a wow. great play. Extension. Okay, so a real talk in the dugout Watch right there. Acuna is like, no, 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 oh, no. It was right under no his real. head. Yeah. Are the are the Braves saying, I got it, I got it, I got it, or are they not saying anything? They're saying, not saying anything. Saying, no, 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 say no. Anything. No, you can't well, say I anything. I think you say, no, 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 so they give up. <laughs> so they give up on the ball. You know? I don't know. I don't know what the rule is on that. I just know that was a sick play. Yeah, that was a great play. You, you, Jonesy, though, you got to give the the pitchers a little bit of credit here, though. I mean, you know, we showed a hit from from me earlier. You you had a two eighteen career batting average, you know. But but how many? How often, Simo? You ever pitch? I have. Dang. Not in the majors. Well, that's what I mean. You know, that's it's a different story. I'd get rocked if I pitched in the majors. Hell, I was getting rocked in little league, so I was going to get hit no matter where I pitched. Jeez, who who just got that hit and drove in that run? Well, it's the same guy that's been doing it all day, right? Four for four. I mean, we talked about how hot he is, and the numbers were up there, what, six for seven? Now yeah, he's, he I think, for seven, seven for eight. Harris I mean, Jr., the four, second. Harris the four second. RBIs in this one. Can't get him Man. out. Turn this lineup over. Kuna's got three knocks on the day. So he stepped out, and he cannot do that again, correct? Nope. He's, he's using his timeout right now. Okay. That's because he was getting out of that way of that foul ball. He still, <laughs> still needs a little breather here. He's one of those guys, though, that you'd pay to go see play. Uh, oh, uh, absolutely. I see him on TV and I'm watching the game. I just stop whatever I'm doing. He's that exciting. Goes Harris. I didn't I didn't see that one. He looked like I can't tell if he was they're going to review that one. I don't know. No, look at him no, leaning. But he's leaning. He's got jump, a great looks jump. in and then just yeah. boom. Oh, yeah, he missed the tag. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Speed kills. Remember Gerard Dyson said, that's what speed do. Speed, <laughs> speed never slumps. Yeah. It never slumps. <laughs> but this is the Braves' ammo, right? I mean, just continue to, 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 apply pressure. to, to punish. He got away with that one because that one was a, that was a, that was a little bit of a spinner up in the zone in the middle. You, you know what? I don't know, just impressed me a little about the Braves, though, is you got, you know, arguably your ace on the mound, big guy, and, you know, and he's getting tattooed early in the game, and, and that didn't face the Braves one bit. Yep. Not one bit. Ooh. 
Well, we've got the players only. We'll be back on the other half. Thanks, Bobby Hick. Thanks for taking care of your boy. Park, watch baseball live or on demand on your favorite supported devices. Save 50% for Father's Day through June 18th. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Our players only telecast continues with the Tigers needing a little offense and in a hurry now, gentlemen. Yeah, they do, Keats. You know, it just seemed like uh, that big explosion back in the fourth inning, that five run fourth, and, you know, Tigers chipped away a little bit, got it within a couple, you know, but now they find themselves down by five. You got to get it going in a hurry. Yeah, we're running out of outs. You know, Jonesy, we, we were talking the other night, Monday, just and I'd love to hear how, how this happens. You know, Nick Anderson, he he was in the game on Monday, but now there's been a day off. So he's in the game today. He's facing Andy Ibanez or Miguel Cabrera and a number of different hitters that he might face in this inning. Ooh, that ball just just foul. Wow, yeah, why that was wow. a lot closer than yeah. And Andy didn't even bat, run. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh man. Um, but how does he go about if he's got to face these guys? He's facing them in this inning. Let's say he comes in the second game of the double header. Yeah. If you get a guy out right now, oh, it looks like AJ's going to go out and make sure. We're going to review this. Tigers lost their challenge, but this is a could be a crew crew chief uh, review. This is a crew chief review for a potential home run. Yeah, the crew chief and and good for AJ. You know, I think everybody probably knows that that's foul, but you might as well take a look. It, maybe if there was a higher camera angle of maybe is he saying the ball might have ricocheted off the foul pole a little higher that's going to be a tough angle to see. Well that's what you know Simo we, we've had the pleasure of working with Dan Dickerson and, and he's adamant about putting a camera on top of the foul pole for situations just like this. Yeah, that way you get a clear clear right view. on top of that foul pole. It's hard to see. Take a look there. When you put a camera right on top, you can see that where it where it lands. Where it, it, se it seemed like it was closer to the pole higher up and then ended up a little farther away. After review, the call on the field stands as a foul ball. Foul ball. But good for AJ. I mean, he's going to, you know, use them all. You've got it. You can ask for the crew chief review like he did. And so as we get into, like, the latter part of this game, I think, Peaches, every, yeah. every situation kind of kind of changes. You play the situations. And I'm not talking about you change the aggressiveness or how you're pitching, but you're, you're paying attention to the scoreboard, first right. of all. You're understanding the matchups that, that you're facing. You're in the – you're in the – the latter part of the part of the lineup and uh, you know he's he's going to pitch to the to the uh, to the scoreboard but if initially. you're in the game but if you let's let's just say you I mean if you're in the game you're you're in a safe situation so you get somebody out you get a particular yeah. part of the line and you get them out a certain way then you got to face them in the game the, the second game and it's still a safe situation yeah I think you, you know would, how do, do you stay with how you got them out or do you well I better change it up here I think it depends on the on the result right there. That's a good piece of hitting it by was. Mr. Abanez. Very nice. Fastball away. And and then well, I mean, let's let's plug it into this situation here, even though it's a five run lead. Uh -huh. And and the reliever out there doesn't want to give up he anything. Want, yeah. But it's like it's like it's almost like uh, there's certain rules that you that you that you play according so your team wins, right? And if you're behind in the count and you've got a five-run lead, and even if you've got a guy on, Cabby's getting a fastball a lot more times than if it was a one-run game. You're not going to trick them as much. You're not. You're not. Okay. Yes, you're going to make them. You're going to make them beat you by being aggressive. And, and uh, as the as the inning changes, as the count changes, when you get into 0-1, you can spin a breaking ball here. You can 
you can bounce it right here or you can go down and away because everybody knows what cabby wants to do is that's where you have to pitch cabby for the most part so then that's the cat and mouse do i go right to it up and in or do i you know try to try to get him to swing at a breaking ball away and that's that's going to be a tough play. Come on, Cabby. Come on, Cabby. Come on, Cabby. Wow. It's a good play. Yeah, that was a good play. Way over in foul yeah. territory, that's knowing that, that Miggy's. That's that Brooks Robinson stuff right I there. I mean, that right? ball's Where right down, down the at, line. You know? Jump up. Yeah. Reminds me a little Derek Jeter there. Yeah. Deep yeah, in the hole. Jump up. Twist so his body. Now, now, there's, now there's two outs. Oh, hold on. Sorry. There's, there's one, one out. out. And and you got base open. You've got situations. You know who's on deck. You know what you've done against him. You're thinking about, uh, you know, certain certain things. Right now, you just want to get ahead. You know, a starter, a starter though. You know, if you have to face him back to back, so you face him, you know, on one weekend, and your ne very next start five days later, you have to face that same team again, that same lineup. You know, yes. What is the cat and mouse there? What, what do you, you do differently? What did you do? I mean, it didn't happen that often, but I hated doing that. I mean, because if you went out and you pitched and you were very successful, you know, do you stay with that particular approach? Or do you say, well, geez, they're going to be looking for all that. And it was only five days ago. But you as a reliever, I mean, at least we got five games, you know, when those guys have other at-bats within that five-day period before facing you. But you got to face them the second part of the a doubleheader. you got to yeah. face them the next day. That's yep. why I just thought, you know, but but no, just pitch into the scoreboard and pitch to the knowing, scoreboard, but knowing that you got a little bit of breathing room if you got a three-run lead or a two-run lead. You got where to, you've got ways to work, and that's maybe why sometimes people will ask, you know, why does a why does a late reliever why does he struggle in, with a big lead? And, and right, you right. know, those those are kind of reasons that you're that you're pitching guys a little bit differently because of the situation. Oh, that's a just missed off another wall. one. It's a good situation. Okay. So now this reliever's mentality switches. Now it now it goes into okay, I'm going right to the right to the report, right to what he what he really struggles with because I gotta get out of this inning. Nice to see Eric Haas though on that fastball away. Stay on it. Then pulling off that ball. Hits that ball the opposite way. Bunya's easy in the first, from first to third. Acuna's on though. Helped Eric Haas to a single there. Yeah, yeah, that was. He tattooed that ball you know, off the right field wall. That's a good point, Simo, because that anytime an outfielder turns his back, it's a double, right? Yes. I but mean, that's what you're thinking out of the box. Not, not with Acuna. Now, how about Abanez there? You're thinking that, you know, he should have possibly scored on that? Or did he have to hold up thinking that Acuna may come up with that ball? I don't think he really had to hold up. I think you just keep going until Acuna gets to the baseball and then you're able to get yourself back. So you always want to go towards second base. And then if the ball does drop, it's going to be tough for him to score on that arm out there from Acuna Jr. So I think the best he could have done is what he did, get himself to third base. You, you see, see that see. big lead, yeah, that secondary lead, and then does he read that? You know, he's going back to tag up. Should he have read yeah, that, yeah, thinking no, that yeah, that's yeah. a home run? He's got to be. Over he's got to be more at third base there. Yeah, like yeah. he's got to keep coming at third. Right. Yep. He's and then if Acuna catch down. it, he gets back. But he should have been so close to third base where he was able to score on that ball. There we go. That's it. Now you the those third. runs keep going. Yeah, Hossi to third. It. Yep, we're okay. Good. Nice job. That's a teammate because McKinstry got Ibanez off the hook. Yep, picked him up. Yep. And now and now it can be a positive coaching moment. He can go back and say they can go back in the clubhouse after the game, take a look at the video. The outfield guy can say, hey, this is kind of what we're thinking. Base running guy can say, you know, and you can learn from it. And Haas does, the, does kind of the opposite. He knows he's going to make him throw him out. So he's he's aggressive from the jump, and that's that's good. And so, I think he made that Haas being aggressive there made Acuna Jr. look up. And yeah, that's why which he caused him to yeah, to boot caused that ball. him to maybe kick it a little bit. You know what impresses me about that too, though, is 
Eric Haas has been catching all game, you know, and still has the wheels and, and the thought process that my legs feel good. Well, don't forget he's all, first and third. <laughs> he's also you talk about versatility. He's also catcher slash outfielder. Right. Oh, 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 yeah, no, he's a good athlete. I'm just, but I mean, still, you're, all the pitches that he's had to crouch Correct. down behind in today's yeah, game. Yeah, that's and, right. Man, it still has the, the, the strength to go first to third on that play. Yep. For me, this at, this at bat might, might be a, a good representation of what we were talking about, about 1% every day. I don't want to put a lot of emphasis on it, but you, this would be a good case study. Maybe to take a look here, you got an even count, but you got a base open so he can he can maneuver. That's that base open breaking ball. <laughs> right. Right. And if your torque is in two, you're not just you're not going to just try to give this. You're not trying to give this a bat away. You got to stick to your approach. You're oh still God. looking no, for a pitch. Yeah, sure. Hit. That was a good take. I thought it was. And the Braves know he's been swinging the bat well. Is he going to get something to hit he's here? He's not going to get anything to hit here. Okay. They're going to take, I believe, they're going to take their chances with Veerling. Yeah, well, as hot as he is, as good as he's been swinging, I don't blame him one bit either. So it's either a fastball away or a, or a, or a breaking ball, right? I agree. Well, that's okay, just so out, now that's just respect right there. They they know exactly what how good he's swinging. Now you got to tie and run up. Yeah, okay. but I, I can't sit down for this one, guys. I got to stand up. No, <laughs> something yeah, good might happen. Yeah, I do. Just never know. And they're going to go out and talk exactly about that because now it's turned into a situation where where you know you can you may you may throw a couple pitches, maybe one pitch depending on his command. One pitch to kind of see what the hitter might be trying to do. If he'll if he'll if he'll tip his hand, you look for that front front shoulder on Beerling. Is it is he is he looking to to drive it? Meaning is he gonna is he gonna pull off that front shoulder so he can drive it to left field? Is he gonna try to be up the middle? Is you know what is his what is his mentality going into well, this? Well, I, I can tell you Beerling's approach. Up until two strikes, he's gonna be thinking still right center field on the fastball. Okay. When he gets to two strikes, and if he gets to two strikes, he'll spread out, he'll choke up, Jonesy, and he starts just thinking about peppering that ball again to the right side of the diamond. If you hang him a breaking ball, though, speeds up his bat, and he'll hit it to the pull side. Does he do anything if he gets way ahead in the count, like a like a 1-0, 2 2-0. You'll see him start to look more uh, left center, center to left center. Okay. But, I mean, he's got to be looking for a particular spot, yeah, not trying to cover everything. It's a fastball up. Up and away, probably, and you got to go. That's a good pitch, yeah. boys. Yep. Okay, so one one. You're back in the count. Now you're back into right, up the middle, other way, right? Yep. Simo, because you're still kind of protecting. Because I feel like one one, the pitchers has the advantage. He missed. That's good. Two one. Now he's gonna he, he's gonna come in with another breaking ball. Like That's that. right. You know? That would, but you can't sit it, because no, he right. throws hard enough right. to keep you honest. Exactly. So that's, especially up in the strike zone, he throws hard. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a tough pitch to drive, though, on a 2-1 hitter's count. Sure was. I mean, that's a good pitcher's pitch. Yeah, that's a good pitch. I mean, that's a pitch, too, a four-seater there. It looks there. like he might have, might have. You're laying a little late on that? He was definitely late okay. on it. But I think that you're late because he's like, ah, I shouldn't swing, and he just goes anyway. Because he knows that's not a pitch you can drive. It's a good pitch. He's going to get a breaking ball. Uh, that's ball away. That's okay. why hitting's tough, folks. You hit yeah, 300, that was you go all fastballs. 93, 94. Get some of that. Right on the paint. Going to look at Dylan Dodd. Apparently, he just landed here at 8.15 this morning, Pete. Uh, well, peaches. Well, there we go. Against Michael Lorenzen, the the uh, coolest two-way guy, hitter, pitcher that I know. Looking forward to watching him throw some cheese today. It's so weird with all the information and all the knowledge of everybody, peaches, Simo, that everybody is has got access to 
that that the report is out, what to do is out, the strength of the pitcher, the strength of the hitter is out, and it just comes down to can you make a certain pitch at a certain time, and then if you're a hitter, if you get a mistake, or can you can you fight off one of the, those pitches you struggle with to get to the next pitch? It's still execution, isn't it? It's just it's and that's baseball. Having all the information gives you a specific blueprint on what to execute and then it comes down to learning how to execute and that's where the that's where the knowledge becomes wisdom and that's where the young player has the knowledge and then staying back there yes. what a play wow. nice grab what nice. a play Olsen smiling and saying, oh, how the heck did you get that one? Yeah. You know, Miz actually timed that one really, really well. That was that was up there a while. And he had a, he had plenty of time to get back there. This is one of those things in BP. Pitcher reach up there and try to rob it back, but he pulled it back, man. That's the way you do it. That's why you got the – that's why you got a little bit shorter fence so you can make plays like that. And, and that's why I think about it when Riley Green goes down, you know, defensively, you – you're not losing anything with Jake Marisnik out there. Correct. Correct. Mr. Bristow with a tip of the cap to his new best friend. He will be in charge of making sure that Mr. Marisnik has a water and a towel sitting in his chair after after game one. I mean, guys, just the difficulty of this play. Take a look at this off the bat of Olsen. That ball's going to run away from Mariznik in center. He gets back there. He times it up. He knows exactly where he's at. He is about 6'5". He goes up, makes a play. And how about Riley Green? Yeah. At the top of the look stairs saying, that a boy. Yep, that's right. Just rooting his teammate on, knowing that he wants nothing more than to be out there in center field making that same play. But still a good enough teammate to realize that while I'm not, that boy is, and, yep. I, and I'm grateful for it. That boy good. <laughs> that boy good. <laughs> he's been a really, good back. Throughout his career, though, he's been a really good defensive center fielder. Mm -hmm. One of the been one of the better center fielders from a defensive standpoint. Obviously, he continues to work on hitting, but he's a really solid defensive player. We got another chance for a diving play. Oh. Nothing. That is that's by that might be an impossible catch right there. That, that's that, right between yeah. both the first baseman and the right fielder, perfectly placed. Yeah. All right, it's now, not quite a Texas leaguer. Now what? When something like this happens, you execute, you do everything, and and you give up a hit like that. How, how does that make you feel? For me, I like when I was like a little bit older, it didn't really bug me because then I just you know made sure I make my make my make my pitches on the, the next, next hitter time. which is Denard and it's and, easier and, said than done though when right you, when right you, and I mean when you're struggling it seems like they all fall in yeah and then and then when you're rolling it seems like everybody catches them things like that but you know that I guess that's one of those that where the the hitter hits the line drive Simo and the guy makes a diving catch and then but they say those even out that was the one that tries to even it out yeah. but I don't think it does I but, don't think it evens out either yeah I think I, you guys hit into more great plays than bloopers hit because every because defense is too amazing in the big they're leagues. demoralizing to I me. would but, actually but take they the took blooper. the home run but they, I would take the know. blooper <laughs> over a line drive out every day oh, well, for sure yeah I want the blooper oh, I just yeah. want to get hits that's like somebody swinging confidence. that's like somebody swinging 3-0 and they pop it up you're like thank you <laughs> right. oh, you know absolutely <laughs> okay you try to be a tough yeah. guy swinging 3-0 that's what you get Again, the whole thing, guys, we all know this, this, this pitcher-hitter dynamic that, that we have lived our whole life is, is, is about nothing other than slowing everything down, getting the decks and who you're facing out of the, out of the, out of the equation and execute either your swing or your pitch. Because what I was talking about before was like the info's out there. It's on a video game, dude. Right. It's on MLB The Show. There's all the reports and heat maps and all this stuff, so everybody knows. 
but it just comes down to executing pitches. Yeah, who executes today? And 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 if a pitcher doesn't, these guys these guys barrel it, and sometimes you get away with one. Like that one right there. <laughs> yeah, I like how you transition that. Yeah, you execute, and he made a mistake right over the plate, and you go. Oh yeah, like that one. And sometimes, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. sometimes, sometimes you know, it's better looking hey, than good. Sometimes you're the windshield. Sometimes you're the bug. The bug. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh, one more. One more out. All right, Get Rosie. Back in there. Yeah. Give me a little pop up to third base. Hello? That's not a bad pitch right no. there. Uh, good location. Can't hit it hard, but from a pitcher's standpoint, you want that call. Come on. Yeah, but you know what? In this day and era, especially with all the technology, you're not going to get it. It's just, it's just not. It doesn't happen a whole lot. The umpires have been great at now. If they do, they get, they get reprimanded. So they're not going to do it. And Scott, but, Scott but, Barry's been really good today. He's though. been pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. This has been a, this has been a really good, uh, a really good display of guys in the pen. Being able to to uh, keep us here, give us a chance, and um, you know get us ready for the next for the next game, because uh, outside of the two runs in the eighth, um, you know the pin has the pin's been around and didn't let it get away early. Come on, you got somebody there. Okay, we need three. We well, need, how we about need. this, though? We got to start there. Up on the wall. You want me on that wall? You need me on that wall. Tip of the cap coming from the Tip pitcher. Tip the cap. There he is. I got you, dog. <laughs>One of the things that I really enjoyed about playing Major League Baseball, even going through the minor leagues, the friendships, the relationships that you build with your teammates. Carlos Pena, Morgan's godfather. I had Marcus Taylor, who's my best friend to this day. Uh, the stories that we've shared, the family stuff that we've shared, uh, going on these trips and playing in the ballpark, living out our dreams together. Those are the things that I miss about the game. The game itself is hard, but those relationships, those conversations that you have in the outfield while you're shagging balls, being on the back of the plane, having those really heart-to-heart -heart conversations, yeah. you know, those are things that I really and truly miss about the game of uh, playing the game of baseball. How and about I, you guys? And I feel like in this day and age, I feel like some of that's taken away with the social media yeah. aspect of it. The clubhouse is not as insulated and secure. You see other sports. You see, you know, player team meetings going up on social media and things like that. And for me as an old guy, I mean, that's that's a foul. It is. Because in the, uh, in the course of a season, when it's so long, it's very difficult. Um, we all need each other as as players and I'm learning peaches as a broadcaster it's kind of the same team concept everybody is all pulling all they want to do is put on a good broadcast ho hope the Tigers win give us every situation to help us come up with all the cool stats and stat cast and all the info to do the exact same thing so peaches what about with you no I just listening to both of you and I, I agree Simo I mean I, I miss it dearly it's been a long time but um, Alan Trammell was in first couple of games and, and and I ran down as soon as I saw him I had to run down to see him and uh, but you know I came to watch you guys play right and now we're together Simo you know we've become good friends and Jonesy we spent some time at at uh, fantasy camp together now we're spending more time up here and it's all because of the game of baseball that's brought us together even yeah. though we played in different eras mm -hmm. and everything like that it doesn't mean that we can't be close and and we are and, and, and it's all because of the game of baseball yeah it's yeah. a beautiful thing you it learn so like, much man. it feels like that's what trend that that's the common thread you know that transcends everything is is you know game recognizes game no matter what generation it right. is you blew my mind when you said you were up in the major leagues at age 20. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. I can't I can't fathom that. No, it took me what? I got there at 24. How about you? 25. 25. Yeah, I was out I had of a college. long journey, though, in the minor leagues, dude. I was six and a half, seven years. Well, there was I, days where I was like, man. I still haven't had a tomato. I don't know if I'm tomato, ever going to make it. I still haven't had a tomato and do, do, do ketchup, it sometime. ketchup do it. paste sandwich. Do it. No, soup. <laughs> do it. 
to tomato and ketchup paste. Do, do, Folks, do he was it. talking about tomato. It, what it, is it? And it, no, it, boiling water and put ketchup and, and t- t- tomato soup. It just, it's, you know, I mean, it's tomato soup. It doesn't sound good to and, me. And, yeah, and, and you can boil, you can boil, you know, make a pasta, right? I mean, mm-hmm. pasta is pretty inexpensive, you know, and take that. <laughs> that same ketchup <laughs> it's your sauce man i mean we're talking you know Look, it's like so he had to take man. his glasses off for that i mean i mean you're making a pasta you're making you're making a pasta hey <laughs> all right gang two out you're gonna tell you you're what. gonna go home to jordan you're gonna try that you're gonna tell I'm me right. too I'm gonna, I'm gonna get michelle to get out packs of ketchup <laughs> boil some water and, and put tomatoes in. That's, what, that's going to be my next. Oh, that's, that's my cleanse coming up. Hey, we got cleanse. we got two outs. Two outs on the two greatest broadcasts of my career. <laughs> I had so much fun with you guys. You guys, no, is, hey, man. you guys make it look easy, folks. It's hard. We're going to have more. We're going to have more of these too. This is going to be fun. If you loved it, uh, call Bally Sports. If you hated it, call me. <laughs> I'll tell them. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> we had a great time. The Tiger fans were, were a lot of fun. Everybody on the concourse that I ran across when I was going to get my CMO bat and my Dan Petrie baseball was like, hey, love the player broadcast. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you guys for hanging thanks out with for, us. Thanks for Bally giving us the opportunity to uh, really show the difference between uh, this, uh, this side show and and how it really goes in the broadcast because <laughs> it's t- hey i'm telling you, it's you guys tough, it's, ain't it? it's tough it is we are herding cats <laughs> up here folks we call it organized chaos you know the next time we do this hopefully we'll be we'll be able to be out like we were on monday night with the fans and, yes. and uh you know that that was a lot of fun different perspective and and just Getting to mingle with the fans, I, I I really hope that happens for three straight games. I just need better weather. I'm paying the price today for it, but I've enjoyed it. I'm playing a little hurt, but I've you've enjoyed always, hanging out you've with you guys. always played hurt. Well, you have that to. That was a good thing about yeah. you, and I'm, I I know you played hurt. You, you have just, to. Boy. Y'all, well, One uh, year deal. What you do in the 80s? You just rub DMSO on <laughs> everywhere. Well, I still can't hurt. straighten my elbow out. DMS, oh, wow. Just, you know, DMSO. Did you see that? Look, like, at that. Look at that. That's, yeah, a, that's a lot of sliders. His. That's a lot of sliders there. You know? Oh. Yeah. Peachy, does that pop every time you just move your elbow? No, it feels great. I can throw. I does still it? throw a lot. You know. Throw beat Well, I used to before my high school. You still throw your batting practice? Well, I don't know. I wouldn't. I throw terrible. Oh, no. So, terrible. We're, stay, so we're staying away from DMSO and yeah. Red Hot and all that stuff. That the, the, uh, all that of work. the guys that, that I play work. with, they did the snake oil. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Snake oil and some – now it's all Flexol. And they got these uh, – the, the guns that they that they massage everything with. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, those those work. Yeah, yeah those, those do work. work. I've got those one are good. of those. Technology's yeah. come a long way, yeah. folks. You know why? They got to come up with more technology because everybody throws a hundred. That's exactly why. And 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 Acuna hits ball five hundred eighty feet. Get in there. There's oh, a yeah. knock. That's my guy. You got another point. Pick the stick, fellas. We're picking the stick. And my stick. Oh, look out there. My stick showed up. Got him a knock. Thank you so much. How about you break this down? Here you go. Two seam fastball on the inner half, moving in on the hands. Good at bat. Has beast the Ooh. ball to the spot. Yeah, he makes a full circle there. I was going to say, look out, look out, look out. That's whoa, really whoa, good. Whoa, whoa. Full okay. circle. A little spit there. Look at oh, Mez, Iglesias. Mez is go. saying, come on. What are you doing here? They might know Iglesias, huh? They might have a little relationship here. Oh one, Cabby's getting sliders. This guy doesn't want to mess with him. There's two outs. He's getting nothing to hit. I think he'll throw me any, probably any, the any whole, change up. Any the change up down? Bat. I don't know. Look at him drop down. Yeah. Did he, did he drop down right there? How about I mean the respect? I mean, Glacius, That's who they got to, to to beat up on Monday night. He's in this game. Not even a safe situation, Jonesy. Yeah, that's true. You know? That tells me Minter's back out for the night. He just did he get again. it again? Did he get him again? He got him in the gap. Oh, and it bounced over. There are two rules in, in baseball that are pro pitcher. You ready? Yeah. There's only two rules. You get more balls than strikes. There's and, that change. That's a bad one. And the ground rule double. That's up. When you hang it, 
Miggy banged that ball to left center field. The ground rule double benefits a pitcher because that was a run. All right. It's getting interesting here. It is. Well, it's like, man, I would have scored on that easily. And back you go. Here we go. Yeah. Good veteran catcher right there. Yeah. It's a little stuff. It's a little stuff, guys, that 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 you pick up on of this guy saying, hey, man, that's enough. Let's go. We got two outs. Let's focus back down, make a good pitch down, and let's get out of here. See, this is what we were just talking about last inning, though. You know, where the Tigers got to Iglesias to win that win that game the other night. He wants to on Monday night. Now he's got to face the same team in a non-safe situation. How's he going after these guys? You know, and yeah. some, some of them are yeah. different, of course. Miggy wasn't in the game. Hasi wasn't in the game. But still, I mean, he's like, wait a minute, I'm not so comfortable here. These guys just beat me up two nights ago. Yeah, you want to on a game like this when you know there's, there's a double header and you want to be for your manager's sake you want to be hot for the next game you want to try to get out of out of here with the least amount of pitches that you can yeah. so you can you can present your case but with he's already got 22, 22. pitches he, he might not throw in game two so then that changes everything and then you you go and you empty the tank here so you don't have to get anybody else up and mess with them you get up and make sure you finish this game so Iglesias will finish this game. Joe's, Joe's hot. Joe, Joe Jimenez was up throwing with him, so he's I think hot. Was I think it was. Oh, okay. Was he? he but he's not now. But he. But he was hot. Yeah. But I don't know. You got your closer. I mean, Minter's got nine, and Iglesias has got nine saves. Yeah. You know. I mean, I don't. I don't know that. Take him out until until the game is tied or there. You know, it's over. You can't no, you take get, him out. You get Joe up and you get him up in a hurry because the next guy on is a save situation, which would justify getting one of those guys up. But Iglesias doesn't want to let it go that far. Haas does. Two outs. Tigers down four. Pretty good breakdown. I mean, one. Yeah, it is. I mean, just get it. I mean, I mean there is a guy on. over there that has some pop in that bat. If Eric Haas does get on over here, Jonathan Scope. Ball. Get out, get out, it is. So you you get Joe going. If you want to change pitchers. Look at me thinking like a manager. Look at me. Look, watch me. Hey, how Pitch about here. this? Two Pause. strikes. In a little bit, right? In Zemo? a little bit, gets in on the hands a little bit, but he's strong. He muscles that ball out to short to the field. Drives in a bun, yes. This is a big advantage, uh, Peaches, that the players, when Simo and I era, that my, and these guys especially, that your guys didn't have. Down underneath, there's those there's those machines that they They're can turn ready. it up to 100 yeah. miles an hour, and he can yeah. get loose, and and he can see it and be used to the velocity. So when you get out there, you don't have to waste that first strike as a pinch hitter, getting your back loose because you're ready to go. Come on, Scopey. That's why they were breaking ball. And as a pitcher, we were thought every, <coughs> excuse me, every pinch hitter either got a fastball up or a first pitch breaking ball. And this is a great time for that first one of the year to see Mo. You, yeah. know it's, you know it's coming, and this is the perfect time for it. He's in the slider here. Yeah, but the Glacier's got to make sure he gets it down because if he leaves it, if it's just spinning, Scope will deposit it. No, he, he wanted it too. That one had some late movement in on the hands. Good location there. Because there's no question he's not trying to hit a single here. But look how that ball runs in oh, on him. That's a difference too. I mean, giving him a chance on that inside part of the plate. Ooh, man. Missing that fastball right down the middle. 94. That, that one looked like he was just trying to put it in play, looking up the middle. Watch that. Yeah. Yep. Just shorten that up a little bit more, trying to hit a line drive. That's one of the things he has done, Petey, like with just being a bench player now, and this is probably the first time in his career, he's shortened up. He doesn't have a lot of movement in his mechanics. There we go. Wow. 
Good play. Well, you can see Albie's going way up the middle. Plants off that back foot, pushes off, gets a lot on that throw, and he's able to get scope that first base. Game over. That does it for today's players only. Join me and Shep for game two of the doubleheader. Coming your way in about a half an hour. Coming up next, Inside the Tigers.